Hello everyone. Welcome to the first ever Google Workspace Summit. We're excited to share our latest Google Workspace product innovations with you today and demonstrate how they can help your organization thrive in this era of hybrid work. In 2020, everything changed about the way we work. We've had to adapt, improvise, and innovate. For all of the employees in our company, Google Workspace has been the foundation of these efforts, allowing us to collaborate, to build great products, to work with customers and partners, and to move our business forward, even when we couldn't be physically together. Many of our offices are starting to open for hybrid work in the United States and many other places across the globe. Over the past two years, we at Google have been rethinking our physical office space, experimenting with different types of individual, small group, and larger collaboration spaces for brainstorming and creative problem solving on campus. We've taken the same approach to Google Workspace products. For example, we've launched companion mode and whiteboarding in Google Meet to help make hybrid meetings more productive and inclusive. We continue to optimize how Google Workspace works on mobile devices to enable people to work effectively from more places and during commute hours. We're integrating conferencing and chat into Google Docs to enable informal ad hoc communication and to reduce meeting fatigue. Google Calendar now provides the ability to indicate your work location and set working hours and we continue to enhance Google Workspace and our Work Safer program to enable secure and private communication and collaboration, whether you're working at your office, on the go, or at home, and no matter what device you use to collaborate. Today, we're sharing more about these learnings with you, and you also hear from our customers, including Airbus, Cas Light Health, Carrefour, and Salesforce about how Google Workspace is helping them transform the way their teams work. We recognize that are common scenarios that many organizations feel the urgency to address, from how to empower frontline workers, to transitioning your office to hybrid work, to securing your organization. We'll share how Google is addressing these challenges and opportunities ahead and how we're building product experiences to help you and your organization achieve your goals in this new hybrid work environment. We've also created breakout sessions to discuss these topics further. Finally, partners play a pivotal role in meeting the needs of Google Workspace customers. And we're grateful to our sponsors, especially our premium sponsors, Citrix, OpenText, Palo Alto Networks and SADA for their support of this event. We encourage you to attend their breakout sessions. I would like to thank you again for joining us today and taking the time to understand how Google Workspace can support your business as we all continue to navigate hybrid work. Before I turn over to Javier, here's a quick glimpse of what our vision for the transition to hybrid looks like. You're serious about business, right? Then it's time to get serious about doing things differently. Work has changed. It can be here, there, anytime, anywhere. Online, on site, on the red eye. And that means getting serious about how we collaborate. Across oceans or soccer fields. It means getting serious about how we come together to create, ideate, and make the big plans without the long hours. How we get everyone in the same space and synced up without having to meet up. security and privacy are a must-have, not an add-on. 
and how important work doesn't interrupt important moments. We need to think seriously about building community and equity. Because the people you want to hire, well, they already do. You need to look like the future, not the past. Serious businesses don't just need tools that work. They need tools that work better for everyone. The kind we believe in building to help billions every day. The last two years have shown us that Google Workspace has the resiliency and flexibility to allow us to be successful. So no matter what comes next, we believe that with the product, we can continue to deliver to our clients in a really effective and high quality way. We use Google Workspace inside and outside of everything we do. It makes it super simple to coordinate within documents and collaborate with our teams. That's right. Serious businesses don't just need tools that work. They need tools that work better for everyone. Hello and welcome. I'm Javier and it's great to be here with you all. As Thomas mentioned, we have a lot of great sessions prepared for you today. So be sure to check out the full agenda on the main page of our website where you will also find our on-demand content. Now let's jump right in. The last two years have transformed everything about the way we work. Every day, we've been asked to adapt and boost our resilience. We've gone from yearning for work to get back to normal to re-examining everything about the way we work. Some headlines call this the Great Reset. But however you want to label it, there's a real sense of urgency for organizations to make lasting changes that will help them thrive in this new world. Businesses are ready to break free from the status quo. At the beginning of the pandemic, it became clear just how fragile that status quo is, as operating models were disrupted and organizations scrambled to adjust. Tools that were designed for the PC era of desktop collaboration and workplaces designed for the era of behind-your-desk work were suddenly put to the test in supporting remote employees. Millions of at-home workers struggled with outdated VPN technologies just to access information. And on the rare occasion when they did go into the office, they often found meeting rooms designed only for the people in the room, with their remote colleagues reduced to a maze of digital tiles on the wall. We realized just how much work was actually enabled by spontaneous conversations in the many moments in between meetings. In fact, Frontline workers, the people who make up most of the global workforce, remained in place when the rest of the world went remote. This left a lot of them feeling disconnected from each other and from their employers. To cope, they reached for whatever tools they could find to get things done and to stay connected to each other and to the rest of the business. In the end, the tools they improvised with weren't effective and they weren't connected with what the rest of the organization was using. In some cases, they even introduce security risks. But now, as we transition forward and establish new norms, it's clear that hybrid work isn't just about where people work. It's about how people work and the magic that happens when they're working together. It's time to move past a one-size-fits-all approach to work and ask how we enable everyone to do their best work from anywhere. Google Workspace was built for this moment. In fact, 16 years ago, when we launched Google Docs and Sheets, we introduced the world to a new way of working. For many, it was the first time they worked in a digital space together in real time without the burden or the risk of sending documents back and forth. Today, this new way of working has become second nature for billions of Google Workspace users around the world. If we think about how work really happens in organizations, in every industry we find that there's a diverse set of functions and roles with their own distinct communication and collaboration needs. Organizations need to be extra vigilant to prevent information silos, especially in a fast-moving environment. Solving for this requires a solution that is flexible enough to help people thrive in their individual roles 
while opening up collaboration and bringing together work that's happening across functions. This intersection of empowering individuals and bridging organizational workflows is where business success really starts to take off. We need solutions that are complete and connected, modern and secure by design. Technology can be part of the connective tissue that brings together entire organizations, regardless of role, from the front lines to the back office and everywhere in between. Having a complete and connected solution is about more than just empowering people through a set of tools that bridge email, documents, meetings, and chat. Today's collaboration happens throughout the day, not just in scheduled meetings or chat messages. It happens in the trail of comments in documents and presentations, in that sidebar in the meeting, and in the digital tools teams use to keep on top of what's more important. Only by having an integrated solution and bringing all roles into a shared, flexible canvas for collaboration can your organization avoid the information silos that discourage innovation. The beauty of this approach is that you enable people to collaborate in the places they're already working together instead of having them switching tabs and tools all day long. Turns out it's also easier for IT to manage a single solution than to be managing a handful of point solutions. But a complete solution shouldn't be confused with a closed proprietary system. In fact, extensibility is a core part of the workspace approach, connecting users and teams to tailored experiences for specialized work, whether with a third-party app from the Workspace Marketplace or even apps that you make on your own with AppSheet. The power of Google Workspace is that it is both complete and extensible. Bringing together the Google apps you use every day, Gmail, Docs, Meet, Spaces, Chat, and more, with your other favorite apps. We know our customers have deep investments in line-of-business solutions and that any productivity tool is made more powerful by the integrations that streamline everyday tasks for their employees. SAP is one of the world's leaders in this space and plays an outsized role in this arena. A key to their success is their ability to address customer needs and enable digital transformation for hundreds of thousands of organizations, including some of the most recognizable brands in the world. Today, I'm delighted to announce that we are expanding our relationship with SAP and addressing one of the top requests we hear from our customers, delivering native integration between SAP S4 HANA and Google Workspace. This new integration enables you to bring together your most critical business systems with tools that can transform how work gets done. This means that a financial analyst working on SAP systems day to day can work on SAP data while collaborating with colleagues in Sheets or Docs. Because of this extended partnership, application data and documents will be tightly integrated and accessible from both Google Workspace and SAP S4 HANA. We're really excited to be a strategic partner with SAP and thrilled about what this integration will unlock for our customers. The next critical question for an organization is whether their collaboration solution is truly modern. Whether it's built for the way that work happens today and for the way that work will happen in the future. You can't build or secure your future with legacy tools and infrastructure. They prevent collaboration and create friction that makes it hard for people to get work done. And they've been proven time and time again to carry security risks. Google Workspace is a modern solution that helps teams of all sizes across entire organizations connect, create, and collaborate. Collaboration and connection, the foundation of our tools, are also a critical success factor for hybrid work. For hybrid models to be successful, they need to thoughtfully connect people, physical locations, and digital tools. And they need to help address three basic collaboration needs. Number one, people want to be seen, heard, valued, and recognized, no matter where or how they work. Number two, people need a means for developing the deep connections that allow for collaboration and innovation. And number three, tools 
need to empower people in the way they use their time to get things done. Addressing these needs is at the heart of the innovation we're continuing to deliver in Workspace. To help people be seen, heard, valued, and recognized, we build tools and experiences that allow people to fully participate, regardless of their location, language, device preference, or physical and technical ability. We launch companion mode and enhancements in Google Meet, so hybrid meetings aren't two meetings in one, divided by those that are in-person and those that are remote. And to help teams make progress on projects and build stronger connections regardless of time zones, we delivered spaces in Google Chat to provide a more effective way for people to engage in topic-based discussions and share knowledge and ideas, both in real time and asynchronously. A group of people can come together directly in a space to move projects and topics along, whether it's a team of 10 working on an event plan, a team of 1,000 participating in an all-company conversation, or a team of frontline workers sharing best practices and connecting with their partners at headquarters. You can even invite partners from outside your organization into your spaces to enable secure cross-company collaboration. And to honor that most precious resource of time, we've launched features like focus time and working hours to help people and teams better organize their time and promote individual well-being. Protecting the finite amount of time each of us has in a workday is just the start. We've also put the power of Google AI to work with new features like built-in summaries in Docs that automatically generate an overview of the main points in a document, so users can quickly parse the information that matters and prioritize where they should focus. All of this innovation comes together in an integrated experience that brings email, documents, meetings, and chat much closer together. And because of this integration, we're able to deliver new experiences, like Smart Canvas, collapsing the boundaries between applications to enable new, hybrid-friendly collaboration across Google Workspace. In fact, since we launched Smart Canvas last year, customers have embraced this flexible, intelligent canvas for collaboration. Smart Canvas usage now exceeds comments in Docs, which is a stunning testament to its utility and its ease of use. Now let's talk a little bit about how we help you build resilience and agility into your business. You see, security lies at the foundation of resilience. It's a basic need for every organization and requires advanced capabilities that adapt over time as threats evolve. We believe security should be built in at the architectural level and pulled through to the user experience. Having confidence that your company's data is secured is also obviously a must. Google Workspace is secure by default because it comes with enterprise-grade access management data protection, encryption, and endpoint protection built right in. We also make it easy for end users to just do the right thing. We've designed sharing, content storage, and collaboration in a way that intuitively helps users make more secure choices. We all know when your employees are more secure, your entire environment is more secure. The risk of cyber attacks is urgent and real for every business. Attackers are creative and determined. Google has built one of the most advanced security infrastructures to protect ourselves and our users against the most sophisticated attackers every single day. Over a decade ago, we pioneered an approach to security that is known today as zero trust. What we've learned about security and some of our most powerful capabilities are built in to help secure your hybrid workforce. We keep more people safe online than anyone else in the world, blocking more than 99.9% .9 of malware, phishing attempts, and spam. And because we operate as a cloud-first service, you're always running the current version without the need for patching or end-of-life support. This means your security can be up-to-date everywhere and new risks are mitigated automatically. With our recent FedRAMP high authorization, any workspace customer can rest assured that they are collaborating at this high level of security without having to purchase and deploy a separate GovCloud instance. 
This approach removes the barriers of cost and complexity for customers working in or with the highly regulated U.S. public sector. Privacy is also top of mind for us. We're building some of the most advanced privacy-preserving technologies into our products to keep your data private and to give you more control over it. If you're a commercial or public sector customer in the European Union, the recent announcement of the new EU-US data transfer framework is likely top of mind. We welcome these efforts to enable trusted transatlantic data flows and remain committed to meeting our customers' digital sovereignty requirements through industry-leading protections and powerful controls that go well beyond legal and policy requirements. To that end, we're announcing that Workspace will provide the ability to monitor and control data transfers to and from the EU by the end of 2023. This commitment builds on our existing support for data regions by giving you the capability to define where your data is processed and where it is stored. You will also be able to more precisely define and control the conditions under which your data can be accessed by cloud support or administrators through enhancements coming to our Assured Controls offering. Client-side encryption capabilities will also serve as a powerful tool here. Our unique approach to client-side encryption gives you authoritative privacy control as the sole owner of private encryption keys. We will deliver this control without the need for legacy desktop clients and without compromising any part of our user experience. We're making these investments to help you stay on top of this rapidly evolving landscape. We've covered a lot today, but it's worth re-emphasizing that solving for the interface between your people, your tools, and your physical workspaces will be an enduring part of defining hybrid work success. Having a complete, modern, collaborative solution that securely spans the types of work and locations it takes place in, both now and in the future, will be essential. And while we can't predict the next bend in the road, we do know that Google Workspace, designed from the ground up for flexibility and people-first collaboration, was built for this moment and for what comes next. Now, we're gonna move on to the demo on the other side over here, where I'll join my friend Ali McKee, who will kick things off to show us how Google Workspace is fueling hybrid collaboration. Thanks, Javier. Hi, everyone. I'm Ali, and I'm a product manager here at Google. And today, I'm excited to show you how Google Workspace can help transform collaboration at your organization. As Javier mentioned earlier, many organizations are struggling to equip their people with the tools they need to thrive in a hybrid workplace. As someone who joined Google during the pandemic, I know how important it was for me to be able to easily connect and collaborate with colleagues, whether we were working from home, the office, or elsewhere. So let me tell you Myra's story. This is Myra, who's about to start her first day at Symbol Superstore, a global retail company that recently started using Google Workspace to transition to a hybrid model. Myra is based in Singapore, so she'll be tackling her first day remotely, meeting her new manager, colleagues, and even starting her first project. As Myra sits down at her desk, coffee in hand, she's ready to get started. I'm sure some of you know how it feels to start a job remotely. It can be a little daunting. so. Let's see how it goes for Myra. First things first, she opens her new laptop and logs into Gmail. She's used Gmail in her personal life for years, so she already knows the basics. It looks like Myra already has a few emails, a welcome email from her new manager, Amit, and a couple of event invites. Like any great manager, Amit has included a few tips to help her settle in. He suggests setting her working hours and location and calendar to keep her team in the know and carve out any personal time she needs during the week. Amit also asks Myra to put together a rough onboarding plan for her first two weeks at Symbol and to get feedback from the project management team during their meeting later. It's a team tradition to pass along a few words of wisdom to every new hire. And he even has some info on her very first project. She'll be opening the Symbol Superstore location in Singapore. Go Myra! Amit would like her to introduce herself to the rest of the project team today. Myra's big on organization, so she'll go ahead and start her to-do list. Tasks are a great way for her to make sure she keeps track of everything, big or small.
Now, let's check out those event invites. Looks like she has a new hire orientation coming up later today. Now, Myra can go straight to her calendar to see what the rest of her day looks like. She accepts the invites to her new hire orientation and team meeting later in the day. And notes, she'll be joining the team sync virtually. Myra definitely wants to block off some time to work on her onboarding plan before the team sync. Focus time is great for eliminating distractions like last minute meetings or pings from colleagues. While she's here, she might as well set up her working hours and location like Amit suggested. She'll be available nine to five Monday through Thursday and nine to four on Fridays so she can get to her weekly yoga class. Priorities, right? And since Symbol is hybrid, she'll be alternating between working from home and in the office. Now that Myra's day is all planned out, she's feeling much better. Starting a job remotely isn't nearly as stressful as she thought it would be. Now it's time to start diving into those to-dos. But first, she'll spend a bit of time chatting with her new manager. It's a relief to know the team meeting will be casual. And I bet that Asana bot will come in handy on her first project. Myra has used Asana as a project manager in previous roles, and it'll be great to easily get details on her projects without leaving chat. It looks like Myra also has a notification in Spaces. This probably has something to do with that Singapore project Amit was telling her about. What a warm welcome from her project team. This will be a great way for Myra to get to know colleagues from all parts of the business, from finance to marketing to retail associates on the front line. Speaking of, Myra has a new message in her project space from Sarah, retail associate at the store in Malaysia. Sarah is gonna be sharing customer insights with the team for the store launch, and she wants to help Myra get up to speed. This project planning doc should help. How convenient. Her doc and chat are in the same place. At her last company, she had a different app for everything, from email to chat to documents. But having everything connected here will be a huge time saver. The doc stretches across her entire screen and has a lot going on. But with interactive elements like voting and smart chips, it's a lot easier to digest. Myra can easily find helpful links, discover who's doing what, and even see the most popular proposed store location in Google Maps. Myra won't have time to read all of this today, but the automatically generated summary helps her to quickly understand the key points. And just like that, Myra's first task of the day is done. So it's time for her orientation. Myra is ready to connect with some of her fellow new hires and learn more about life at Symbol. The company's been growing quickly and there are a ton of new employees. So this meeting will be happening in a live stream format, which is a great alternative to a standard video meeting when the guest list is large. Myra takes a look at her calendar, opens the event and easily joins the live stream. The session host, Fatima, head of HR, kicks off the orientation. To get started, she'll see where everyone's tuning in from. Myra's excited to see how global the company is, with new hires joining from every continent. Additionally, new hires often have a lot of questions, so Fatima uses the Q&A feature to let them add questions during the session. People have already asked a couple of questions and Myra will upvote the questions she's most interested in. She also adds a question to better understand how Symbol will help new hires thrive in a hybrid workplace. At previous jobs, Myra often found that live streamed events weren't the most engaging and it was really challenging to feel connected to the other attendees. But here, polling and Q&A helped her get to know fellow new hires and Symbol a bit better and Myra is excited to continue her onboarding journey. So Myra made it through her first orientation and she actually had fun. Now she can start creating her onboarding plan. What will the next few weeks hold for Myra, I wonder? Thankfully, it's not gonna be too difficult for her to figure out since slides makes it easy to quickly get started.
There are also lots of other slides she can choose from, which will definitely save time on future projects. She wants this plan to be in solid shape before the team meeting. First impressions are important, right? Plus, it'll be helpful to get advice from her team members who've been in her shoes before. Mara finalizes her slide and has a bit of time before the team meeting. So she decides to take her dog, Scout, to the neighborhood dog park. While Scout plays with his dog park crew, Myra sits down to review her slide on her phone. Good thing she caught a tiny typo. A ping arrives over chat and it's from Sarah, the store associate that sent her that project doc for the Singapore store opening earlier. Sarah was busy working with customers at the time, but now she has time to connect. It'll be good for them to find time to talk face-to-face -face later in the week, since they'll be working closely with one another over the next few months. Myra is able to quickly and easily add this meeting to both their calendars directly on her mobile device. And there's even a suggested title and time slot that works for both Myra and Sarah. At Myra's previous company, store associates didn't have access to the same technology she did which made it hard to get customer insights and build relationships with them. Connecting with Sarah has been much easier so far. Back from the park, Myra is feeling refreshed and relaxed after a little outdoor time. Perfect, since she's about to introduce herself to her new project management team for the first time. She's happy to see that the edit she made to her onboarding slide on her phone carried over to her laptop. Let the meeting begin. Like Amit suggested earlier, she'll share her onboarding slide in the meeting and gather feedback from her peers. Myra's a little nervous, but she's got this. Since they'll be working on the content together, the whole team can join the meeting directly in slides, which makes it easy to connect and collaborate with all of her new colleagues in one place. Myra walks the team through her onboarding plan and can easily make changes in real time based on the feedback from the meeting. Her teammates are also able to add comments directly to her slide, which Myra can address after the meeting. Well, that was a success. Scout even barked during the middle of it and her new teammates didn't hear a peep, thanks to the magic of noise cancellation. So it's official. Myra's first day is done. And may I just say, she did an amazing job with a little help from Google Workspace. I hope you saw how Google Workspace is a modern, all-in-one solution that helps teams of all sizes across entire organizations connect, create, and collaborate. These are the foundations of our tools that are critical success factors for hybrid work. And with that, I'd like to invite Javier back to the stage for some closing remarks. Thank you, Ali. That was an awesome demo. It's incredible to see Google Workspace in action and what it enables for individual workers and for organizations. I'm inspired every day by how Google Workspace is helping people and businesses achieve their most ambitious goals, whether they're business results, personal outcomes, or tackling important issues like sustainability. We're really excited to continue on this journey with you. Thank you for joining me and Ali today. And stay tuned for our live Q&A segment, which we'll be doing over there and the other set in just a minute.
is a great demo alley, and it's always so valuable and fun to see the tools in action. We are so excited to continue the day with you all. And just in case this is your first time tuning in, I'm Bao Lam, Head of Marketing for Google Workspace, and I'm live on set in Sunnyvale, California, joined by Javier Soltero. Thank you, Bao. Good to see you. Uh, I'm Javier Soltero, Vice President and General Manager of Google Workspace, and I am thrilled to be spending the rest of the day here live on set and excited to hear what our audience cares most about and has questions on. That's wonderful. Before we jump into the live Q&A, Javier, I want to remind everyone to submit your questions below the video player. We'll be pulling questions and answering as many of them as we can in the next 20 minutes. Great. Yep. While we give people a chance to submit their questions, I have one to kick things off. You do? I do. OK. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. Our first question comes from Corey in North America. Corey asks, I work at a large enterprise company that's currently using Microsoft Office. We often hear feedback from employees that they prefer Workspace because they use Google tools in their everyday lives. We like to start the move to Workspace, but there are concerns about change management migrating data, training users. Javier, can you share your thoughts on how best to approach this? Sure. Um, thank you for the question. Um, let's start with the training users part, because I think in Corey's question, there's something really important that is actually maybe my f most, uh, uh, my favorite quality about Workspace, the sense that people really do want to use it, this idea that people uh, uh, have lots of tools they can choose from uh, certainly in their personal lives, right, and that they would uh, uh, want to use Google Workspace at work uh, as well because of uh, uh, its simplicity, its effectiveness, the familiarity they have. And so that makes this task of actually educating users and getting them uh, trained up on the products a lot simpler. Uh, certainly there's still things that you have to do to make sure that people uh, are not only able to use the tools effectively, but use them in a manner that is consistent with the policies and, and uh, uh, approaches of the particular company. But that aspect of it is actually one of the most compelling reasons to consider evaluating Google Workspace uh, in your enterprise. Now, there are two other parts of this. Uh, one which is, of course, making sure that as part of the deployment experience of Google Workspace, you are able to connect it to all the right places, even interoperate uh, with uh, uh, other systems, including actually Microsoft Office, which we've done a lot of work uh, to ensure that there is uh, uh, rendering fidelity in terms of uh, uh, content formats between docs, sheets, and slides, mm -hmm. and Office, as well as uh, better, uh, more scalable interoperability between things like calendaring uh, and other aspects of, uh, of, of the Office suite. Um, so along with that, the, the, the third part of this, of course, is migration. So you have to be able to get data uh, uh, you know, that may be in other repositories or in other formats and actually move it uh, into a more workspace-friendly environment. And we've made a lot of progress and a lot of investments over the last couple years in particular in enhancing our migration tooling uh, and making it as simple as possible to uh, realize all the benefits of Google Workspace uh, and, and make the deployment journey, I guess, for customers uh, smooth, seamless, and effective. Um, we don't succeed if these products don't actually really capture that sense of uh, uh, choice and the, the interest that they'd have uh, uh, to, to ask their IT organizations to, to help them, to allow them to use them, right? So that's mm -hmm. a very important part of, uh, of what guides us as we evolve these products and certainly a big part of how we're uh, uh, growing in the enterprise. So thank you for the question, Corey. That's great. Uh, it's so wonderful that we have all these tools and training to make it easy for customers to uh, migrate to yeah, Workspace. Yeah. Now, let's uh, go ahead and get our first question from the audience. This question comes from Tyson. How can you best use chat spaces for enterprise communications and collaboration? What's on the roadmap and or what are the best practices? Great. So, Tyson, thank you for the question. Let's see. Um, before I get into chat, let me highlight one of the important parts of why, you know, wh what role does chat actually play in the overall Google Workspace story? We, we now have, as part of Google Workspace, multiple forms of communication available to users. We have email, uh, which is an asynchronous, sort of uh, more turn-based, if you will, uh, uh, long, can, can potentially lead to longer messages, which 
done right can be a good thing, right? Um, we have video calls through Google Meet, which everybody's very familiar with. They are very much real time, and uh, they they are the closest thing, I guess, to the richness of uh, uh, actual, you know, physical interaction and normal communication. And then you have chat, which is also real time, mm -hmm. and plays this very interesting role in in sort of in between the asynchronous communication in, in uh, email and the uh, uh, more real time, you know, face to face contact that Meet enables. Um, so our interest in using chat is to not just make uh, the actual usage and experience of our messaging product incredibly uh, effective. We've added a lot of enhancements to the overall user experience. We've integrated into the Gmail surface so that it actually is something you can uh, access very quickly. Uh, we have uh, enhanced the mobile experience as well to make the most out of a, a mobile um, you know, the mobile f uh, format, if you will, and make it easy for people who are on the move uh, to respond to, ch you know, chat messages and participate. And then with respect to spaces, the way we see spaces evolving is actually uh, oriented around topic-based communication, right? So normally when people think of spaces uh, uh, or any kind of container of chat use, they say, well, this is like a representation of a... Uh, organization or a, a, a group within my, my team. And, and oftentimes that can be the case, but we find that actually one of the most powerful aspects of Google Spaces is when you look at it as a place for discussion of topics uh, uh, amongst potentially a group of people that actually transcend organizational boundaries, may even include external uh, partners, customers, etc. And the activities that they share there, the actions they take, go far beyond just being able to send messages uh, back and forth to each other and uh, uh, react to them, right, with emojis and, and uh, GIFs and so forth. Um, they also include this very unique and very compelling uh, uh, user experience that we've added to Spaces to make it so that if, say, you're in a chat space and somebody uh, says, hey, uh, uh, Bao, can you send me the document uh, uh, for Project X, right? And you say, okay, yeah, here it is, and you paste it into chat, that the, the people that are in that chat space can actually click on that, and within the Gmail uh, 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 workspace surface, we actually open the document right next to the chat, preserving a sense of context, making it easier, bringing you closer, I guess, to the content and the actions that you want to take as part of the natural discussion. We do similar things with tasks, as the demo showed. I mean, there's a lot of ways in which you can both have a very effective chat product as well as really succeed by bringing it closer and integrating it more, more effectively into other parts of Workspace. So that is uh, uh, where we're headed. Tyson, thank you for the question. That's great. And I know we use Spaces all day, mm -hmm. and it's a great knowledge repository as well. Yeah, yeah. Our next question, Javier, comes from Jess. How do we increase belonging using Google Workspace? Oh, this is a very, very good question, so thank you for that. Um, I think I've said in the past uh, um, that maybe the three guiding uh, uh, elements or the lessons that we've learned from these last two years of uh, some really disruptive changes to the way we approach work and life are the following. First off, that what we do is no longer uh, governed by where it happens. So work isn't just a specific place. It can be wherever you're able to work. Uh, second, that people's time and attention remain the most precious resource they have, and their success in their personal life and at work is very closely tied to how, if, how good they are at managing that time and that attention. Uh, and going back to the prior question about chat, we have all these things coming to us, sending us notifications, demanding our attention, all these ways we can communicate, mm -hmm. but people's ability to control that effectively and use those tools well, uh, 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 ultimately it, it depends on their ability to manage their time and actually the direct their attention at the right place. Mm -hmm. And third, that human connection remains really the essential ingredient in any worthwhile endeavor, whether it's teaching a, a, a child to read uh, um, or you know, launching a satellite into orbit. All of those things require people to connect and, uh, uh, and, and, and trust each other and believe that things are possible, et cetera. And so throughout Workspace, we are uh, uh, using these three guiding, uh, uh, guiding elements, if you will, to drive a lot of innovation, whether it's the ability for something simple like, hey, um, 
the, uh, Bao, you're, let's say you're going on vacation. We were talking about spring break just a minute ago, right? Like you'd say, okay, well, I'm out on vacation. Um, I'm, I'm not available. By switching your status in Google Calendar and in, in Workspace, you are now actually able to tell people, hey, uh, I'm not around. So if you need somebody, you should reach out to you know, my, my delegate or, or somebody else on your team. And that as people try to communicate with you, whether it's via email or chat or even scheduling meetings with you, mm -hmm. they'll have a, a, a little bit of a head start in knowing that you're not available and the product will guide them towards alternate paths. Similarly, uh, when we look at something like Google Meet, uh, uh, we all spend a lot of time on video calls these days and they're great. Um, but we have to figure out ways in which we can ensure that we are connecting effectively uh, uh, even when we're all, just being able to look in, at each other and hear each other isn't enough, right? Mm -hmm. Enhancements to reactions, uh, 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 how we do hand raising, how we support hybrid meetings, all of these areas add up to uh, people really feeling like they belong in an organization, especially as we've talked so much about today mm -hmm. in a scenario where you're talking about uh, uh, distributed work and hybrid work uh, for knowledge workers that have the freedom to move around and work from a variety of locations mm -hmm. and certainly the need for belonging for frontline and deskless workers that are actually uh, not in the same uh, uh, situation I guess as their knowledge worker colleagues they have to be able to uh, be connected to each other mm -hmm. and they have to also feel connected and feel like they belong as part of a larger organization so thank you for the question Work isn't done there ever, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a, an area of continued innovation for us over the next uh, few years, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so our next question, Javier, is from Cody. We've heard a lot about Google's AI ML capabilities mm -hmm. and how those are being used to enhance security protections like spam, phishing, et cetera. Can you tell us more about Google's first party advanced security capabilities and also where third party solutions fit into the broader ecosystem approach? Sure, uh, thank you for the question. Um, let's see, uh, I think I mentioned in, in my uh, keynote uh, 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 just a little bit ago that uh, one of the things that, that we obviously we take security very, very seriously at Google. We have an enormous responsibility as a company to secure the most important uh, parts of the lives of billions of people around the world. Um, and as part of all the work that we've done and all the things we've learned just as Google, even before we get to Google Workspace mm -hmm. and Google Cloud, we've been able to innovate tremendously, whether it's things like the Titan security keys or the zero trust model mm -hmm. or things like the Beyond Corp Alliance. All of these things uh, are things that uh, spawn from Google's unique approach as a company to meeting the demands of securing the lives and data for uh, billions of people and millions of customers around the world. Um, as far as uh, how we apply AI to that, well look, I think it's safe to say that Google's uh, uh, advanced and, and, and holistic approach to artificial intelligence permeates just about everything we do. Um, I think the question had some really good examples, like indeed, yes, uh, things like spam, and phishing detection, uh, uh, as well as uh, 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 other aspects of how we approach, you know, the, the uh, uh, securing of content, how we detect usage patterns, how we can tell, for example, uh, whether a user is uh, uh, accessing uh, a workspace from an unusual location that doesn't correspond to the way they normally, uh, uh, you know, access their services or a new device. All of these things um, add up to, a, uh, uh, to this vision of a zero trust uh, uh, environment where we simply start from the premise that we don't trust anything and we observe everything and therefore are able to actually guide both users and the organizations they work for uh, uh, to make better choices around um, how to secure their infrastructure. Uh, two more things I'd like to add to that. Mm. First is that in terms of the overall security approach that Workspace takes, it's important to note that by guiding users to, um, to use the products correctly, right? By having a sharing model that is simple and easy to understand, by adding mm. things like labels uh, uh, to drive content or client-side encryption, we make the usage pattern that the user has to follow uh, familiar while ensuring that they are always doing the right thing. In fact, that there's no sort of side routes, side routes they can take that might compromise the overall security of the solution. 
And the second thing I wanted to add to close on this question is uh, there was a good question around uh, third parties. So obviously, look, for all the innovation Google has done and will continue to do in the security space, it's important to note that we can't do this alone, whether it's in security or in other uh, areas of our ecosystem. Workspace uh, uh, is special because it's an amazing and complete first party solution, but it's also backed by a ecosystem of amazing partners. We mentioned SAP earlier mm -hmm. today. Uh, um, but along with that, on the security side, we've partnered with some of the leading security companies out there to complement our solution and actually create combined uh, 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 product experiences that actually really meet the unique needs of our customer base. And we expect to continue to do that uh, over the coming years as well. Such an important topic. Thank you, Javier. Mm -hmm. Our next question, which is uh, th from Stacy, is, what, in your opinion, is the most vital uh, or favorite uh, productivity feature or workflow within Workspace? Hmm. That is a very good question. I'll answer this one uh, uh, quickly. And it's a, a personal favorite of mine, even though it's actually something that is now rolling out. Um, I love the way in which we've incorporated Meet into uh, uh, docs, sheets, and slides. We pioneered real-time uh, collaboration with these products about 15, 16 years ago, and we have now introduced a big part of the workspace vision, which is the ability to go from real-time collaboration in a document by seeing people's cursors and, mm -hmm. and comments and so forth to, with the, dr with the press of a button, being able to actually move uh, uh, or initiate a Google Meet call directly within the, comp the, the content surface that you're actually editing. Mm -hmm. there, that opens up some really powerful capabilities. So that's a personal favorite of mine. But with a surface area this large, I'm sure there's plenty of <laughs> It's others. hard to pick a favorite, yes, but yeah, indeed, good one. Yes, indeed. I love all my children. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we're out of time, but I want to say thank you to everyone for joining this Q&A. It really flew by, um, but we really loved having everybody here today. Be sure to stick around as our breakouts will begin shortly. These sessions will cover everything from the future of hybrid work to frontline workers and so much more. We want to say thank you to everyone for joining once again. Yeah, thank you. This has been a great experience. Thanks for everybody joining us today from all parts of the world, I'm yes. told. It's been quite, a, uh, quite an event. I think this is a, a, a first for us, so very, very good. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in for the questions, and we uh, look forward to continuing on this journey with everybody. Yes, and please stay tuned for the breakout session. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.
My name is Dave Citron, and I'm a director of product management for Google Workspace. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this breakout session on hybrid work as part of our Google Workspace Summit. I'm going to walk you through some of the ways we're bringing hybrid work to life in Google Workspace and then jump to a customer conversation. As we all know by now, hybrid work is here to stay, and millions of organizations and employees around the world are embarking on their own hybrid work journeys. We recently commissioned Economist Impact to complete a global hybrid work survey. And we found that more than 75% of respondents said hybrid flexible work will be a standard practice within our organization in the coming three years. Based on research and our own experiences at Google, we think there are three main areas to solve for with hybrid work. First, time is more precious than ever, and we need to help people make the most of it. Second, Collaboration equity is essential to ensure all voices are heard and valued. And last, human connection is crucial to fostering meaningful relationships at work. To be sustainable, hybrid work models must reimagine how we combine physical spaces with digital tools to build productive, immersive experiences that meet the needs of remote and in-person employees equally. And what we call collaboration equity is an important part of that the ability to fully participate regardless of location, language, technical or physical ability, or even device preference. We'll see some examples shortly of how technology can help to address collaboration equity in a hybrid work setting. But technology by itself isn't enough. We also need cultural changes to ensure a hybrid first mindset. Based on the experience of our customers and our own experience at Google, We've identified five common meeting types and built blueprints to help organizations optimize the mix of technology, spaces, and norms to get the most out of each hybrid interaction. For example, a team conducting a working session to collaborate on an annual plan will be very different from an all-hands meeting to share that plan and kick off the year. Thoughtful meeting planning is a must for teams to get the most from their time together. Security, meanwhile, is the foundation upon which all hybrid collaboration needs happen with a zero trust secure by design approach. Legacy tools will hinder an organization's future of work ambitions. So with this context in mind, what innovations have we brought to Google Workspace to empower hybrid organizations and their employees? To answer that, let's look at a hybrid collaboration scenario and see how it comes to life in Google Workspace. A hybrid team is working across time zones and locations on a product launch. Some of the team comes together in the office uh, for a few days a week, but the rest of the time they're all remote. They can use integrations between AppSheet and Workspace for desk booking and to optimize how and when they come together in the office. To stay aligned on availability, the team also uses Calendar to keep everyone up to date on work locations, schedules, out of office, as well as time blocks for focus time. Additionally, when they accept meeting invites, they can also specify whether they'll be attending in person or virtually to help with planning. The team uses Spaces in Chat as a central hub for preserving all of the content and conversations for their launch project. Spaces are tightly integrated with tools like Calendar, Drive, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Meet, and Tasks. So they're a great place to centralize knowledge sharing, both in real time and across the team's availability. When we launched Docs and Sheets 16 years ago, we introduced the world to a new way of working. For many, it was the first time they worked in the same digital space together in real time without the burden or risk of sending documents back and forth. That flexible way of working has become second nature for billions of Google Workspace users around the world. Today, Smart Canvas builds on this flexibility as an intelligent canvas for collaboration in apps like Docs, Sheets, and Slides. In our collaboration example, Smart Canvas allows the project launch team to quickly add a brainstorming table into a doc, and then use app mentions to pull in the right people and generate a checklist to assign action items. Once the doc is shared across the team, everyone can quickly and easily drop in their ideas. And when it's time to discuss their ideas in real time, the team can pivot directly from a brainstorming doc into a Google Meet call without the need to schedule a meeting. It all happens with one click. 
We also recently introduced automatically generated summaries in Docs as part of Smart Canvas so that team members can quickly get up to speed with longer documents as the project continues to evolve. Summaries provide a brief overview of the main points in a document. A key part of empowering hybrid work in Google Workspace is helping people get more done and have a greater impact with Google's industry-leading AI technology. And for their regularly scheduled hybrid meetings, participants in conference rooms use Google Meet companion mode on their personal devices while leveraging the best of in-room audio and video from Google Meet hardware. This gives everyone the ability to participate in polls, chat, and Q&A in real time. They can also use their device webcam to better engage remote attendees and give context for who's in the room with a personal video tile. Attendees can express themselves with reactions, bringing energy into the meeting and giving immediate feedback. These reactions will appear in a participant's video tile or overflow alongside their name if their video tile is invisible. The team can also harness their creative energy with whiteboarding in Google Meet. Using the upcoming Series 1 Board 65 in the office, along with the Jamboard app for remote participants, they can brainstorm and visualize ideas for their product launch together as a team from any location. The hybrid collaboration experience is enhanced by machine learning in Google Meet that automatically provides noise canceling, camera zoom adjustments, and optimized lighting helping to ensure that everyone can be seen and heard no matter where they're joining from or the device they're using. Additionally, live captions and translations in Meet calls ensure that language and hearing ability are never barriers to collaborating across time zones and physical spaces. And all of these team activities and collaborations from chat and spaces to the first brainstorm doc to the Google Meet calls happen on a secure, Zero Trust Foundation. Our browser-based born in the cloud approach means that hybrid teams can collaborate securely from anywhere on the devices of their choice. There's no need to install thick client applications or store sensitive data on local devices. And Google Workspace is built on our own beyond corp security model that enables simple and secure access with integrated threat and data protection. We also offer client-side encryption for organizations and regulated industries that need additional protections. When taken together, these innovations in Google Workspace are helping organizations embark on their own hybrid work journeys, keeping their employees securely connected and collaborating, no matter where and how they work together. And with all of this context, we'll pivot to our customer conversation to learn more about how hybrid is coming to life within the large enterprise. I'd like to welcome Lenica alvis Picar, the Head of Digital Workplace Change and User Adoption at Airbus. Thank you, Dave. I'm happy to be here. And thanks to everyone for joining. I know Airbus is a large and complex business. As an organization, you push the boundaries of aerospace research and you make airplanes that carry millions of people around the globe. But in our previous conversation, I was surprised to learn how many employees and suppliers need to work together across multiple countries to make this all happen. Can you give us some insight into how Google Workspace enables this and how you've successfully driven its adoption? Absolutely. So yes, indeed. Airbus is a very large organization that builds extremely complex products. We have 130,000 people working all over the world and we have a supply chain with around 5,000 different suppliers. So it's essential for us to have the world's best collaboration solutions. Our executive committee decided four years ago to move everyone in Airbus to Google Workspace. And even though we had executive sponsorship for this decision, we were perfectly aware that in a business as complex as ours, we needed to have a dedicated approach for each business function. So we met with the executive of each function to explain why we were moving to Google Workspace and what was concretely going to change for their people. We also ask volunteers from the business to become champions. Today, we have around 3,500 champions who are directly supporting colleagues in the business on Google Workspace. And they are also helping our change teams by taking over some training sessions, answering questions in the chat rooms, and by writing some support articles. 
Now, of course, the move to remote work during the pandemic accelerated everything. So what happened in Airbus is that at the start of the pandemic, we didn't have enough VPN connections available for everyone to work remotely. But people could access to Google Workspace without the use of VPN. So that means we had, we had to migrate everyone within the shortest possible time to Google Workspace. And we were very glad to have a solid change management process in place to draw on. But most importantly, people really recognize the benefits of Google Workspace. So an example that I always like to use is that at the start of the pandemic, we had to recalculate all our budgets uh, within the frame of a cash containment exercise. And thanks to Google Workspace, we were able to do this very rapidly in a collaborative and transparent way uh, by using Google Sheets. That's amazing. I love hearing stories of rapid transformation. In your transition to remote work, how did Google Meet help you and the team? So Google Meet definitely helped us um, to make quick connections. Um, so very often we moved uh, from an email or a chat uh, conversation to a Google Meet to uh, quickly connect and quickly discuss and quickly take decisions uh, on important matters. Um, so the availability of Google Meet uh, made us definitely uh, more efficient and we felt more engaged by being able to connect to each other. That's great. Uh, so as millions of organizations begin transition to a hybrid work model, what changes are taking place at Airbus? Yes, so for sure, Airbus also moved uh, to a hybrid working model uh, with a recommendation to work maximum two days per week um, from home and to come three days per week to the office. Now, a fully remote workforce is not an option for us because a large part of our people are working in uh, manufacturing and production. Um, therefore, it's decided team by team what is the best approach for them. Now, in my opinion, uh, the move to, Google, to a hybrid working model would not have been able uh, without the use of Google Workspace. So we have clearly recognized um, that Workspace is providing us with equal opportunities to connect and collaborate from any location. Including people across geographies and, and different parts of the organization is obviously a big part of what hybrid work needs to solve for. Could you speak to that a little? How do you keep everyone connected and collaborating? Yes. So, of course, we have always been working in uh, different locations, um, but the fact that we started using Google Workspace and also that we all had to work remotely uh, really changed a lot of things for us. So basically, we took on new habits, better habits of uh, connecting to each other and to everyone, no matter the location of the people, and including them more in the decision taking. So I think in terms of equality, uh, we made a big step forward and, uh, and also now with hybrid working, this is what we continue to do. That's great. As you think about enabling the next era of work, what is top of mind for you and how can Google Workspace help? So with regard to the next era of work, we actually have a lot of different things in mind. So last year, uh, we launched um, a company-wide survey, a so-called My Working Environment Survey. And we also organized a lot of focus group to speak with people about what are their needs to make the workplace a better workplace. And based on these outcomes, we launched an initiative, which is called a Better Workplace, and which is focusing on elements of the company culture, the physical workplace, and the digital workplace. So in the short term, we are focusing on the daily pain points of people and we're trying to tackle them immediately, but we're also looking into a mid and a longer term vision. Uh, one of the decisions that we took recently uh, was to provide smartphones to um, our production workers. So concretely, this means that in the coming two years, we will provide an additional uh, 35,000 smartphones to our people. And that means that those people then have also access to Google Workspace. And we have already learned in the last couple of years that this is really helping us to create a better workplace. Thank you so much, Lenica, for sharing some of the Airbus story. Wishing you and the team the best of luck, and we're really excited to continue the partnership. Thank you very much. Now I'm happy to be joined by Hilda Klum, who leads technology and transformation at PwC Global. Hi, Hilda. Thanks for joining us for the summit. Hi, Dave. Thanks for including me, and thanks, everyone, for joining. 
So I know PwC has been on a multi-year journey to adopt Google Workspace for its 300,000 global employees. Could you share a little bit about that transition to Workspace and any best practices that were critical? What was the makeup of your implementation team over time? Dave, we started our journey in 2016 with the US and Australia going Google, and we completed over 150 territories by about 2019. This covered a lot of regions, which in itself presents some unique challenges as we deployed Workspace across the network. The framework we used to implement and adopt Workspace needed to transform the way we worked from an electronic sequential series of tasks to a collaborative and digital way of working, enabling real-time co-authoring when working together in the office or virtually. It really did deliver incredible productivity benefits and really nurtured a culture of collaboration and had some impactful downstream uh, benefits, such as the reduction in printing. There were three main areas in our program. Um, one was change and deployment, and this was fundamentally about understanding the territory um, that we were working with, their unique practices, um, anything that was specific to the region and its policies. Um, and it was all about the successful deployment, upskilling and change management practices. Uh, the other element, of course, is the technology integration and how workspace fit into the technology environment of the territory. The third area was the overall program management PMO, so the usual project management capabilities. But I think the key for that team was ultimately that every person in that team was an advocate for workspace. They understood the technology um, and every, every interaction they had with the Territory was an interaction where the Territory walked away learning something new. We essentially taught people how to learn. It's a continuous process of learning. That's really great. Uh, PwC also had a very distributed workforce before the pandemic with employees often working from far-flung offices and, and client sites. Did remote work and now hybrid work disrupt your overall approach to how people work together? And specifically, how has the role of Google Meet and Chat uh, now with Spaces changed over time? Um, for us, I think we were already uh, an organisation who supported uh, not just remote working but flexible working and ultimately we would spend time with our clients either on their site or on our site. So we were a mobile organisation when it came to working. Um, I think uh, what we saw over the last couple of years is this need to immediately move to complete remote working. And uh, we basically did that seamlessly overnight. I mean, we saw our meets go from 300,000 meets a week to a peak of 1.8 million meets a week while everyone was working from home. Um, and that was huge and it was seamless. Um, the platform itself was resilient um, and it supported everything that we needed to support. In addition to that, we saw a lot of improved capabilities coming from Google at a pace and a quality we hadn't seen before. So the need to enhance the core tools to enable a different way of working was really helpful to support our people to continue working with their clients and with each other. Um, you know, we, uh, we do 60 million DMs a month. It's really a core part of how we collaborate and continues to be over time as we we continue to see growth of the tool set and growth of adoption. That's really that's really great to hear. You know, at, at Google, we often talk more about transition to hybrid than return to office because the offices we left behind two years ago are, are fundamentally different. Is this true for PwC as well? How are you thinking about what lies ahead for time spent in the office versus time working elsewhere? I think uh, it is a question for almost everybody um, in terms of how we think we will work moving forward. And I think it's uh, important to be able to provide a platform that gives flex flexibility and enables interoperability moving forward with the different decisions organisations are making around how they see the future of work. Um, 
because we work with clients, that's ultimately what will drive our decision around how we see the new ways of working evolving. But ultimately, that flexibility, that interoperability is, is everything that we're looking for in the platforms that we provide. The ability to work from wherever you need to, whether you're in the office with colleagues, whether you're working remotely, or whether it's a combination of both. And we've seen some capabilities come through the Google Workspace tools that you know, consider all of those ways of working. So I think for me, it's a little bit crystal ball. It's, it's uncertain as to how that will evolve. Um, it's driven by many things and it makes it even more important to provide that flexibility and interoperability. Thank you for, for the valuable insights. You know, when we spoke offline, you mentioned how organizations and employees will, will take some time to really absorb the lessons of the last few years in terms of how and, and where they work. How is PwC Global planning to navigate a period of ambiguity in the changing work landscape? And what's top of mind for you? Um, I think uh, top of mind is that every territory is facing a different set of policies and procedures around how we move forward based on what they're experiencing in their own region. Um, and I think it uh, links very tightly back to what I just said around that flexibility and interoperability, the, continue, the continued ability to provide safety, the scaling. You know, we are seeing that even though people are going back into the office, the adoption of the tool set continues to grow. Um, and, you know, the, the evolution into what the new way of working will look like moving forward the only way for us to really be able to support our teams in that is to provide them the most interoperable and flexible platforms that we can. And I think as, you know, someone in the technology area, we really need to, to make that the focus. Thank you so much, Hilda, for, for joining us for the Workspace Summit. Uh, we were super excited about our ongoing partnership with PwC Global, and we wish you and all of the team continued success. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me and thank you everyone for joining. And that brings us to the end of our session. I hope it's provided you with insights and best practices that you can use in your own hybrid work journey. Thank you and be sure to watch the other Workspace Summit sessions. I'm a key account executive here at Google Cloud. And with me today is Todd Trebek, Managing Director of Strategic Alliances at Citrix. Todd, welcome. Thanks, Stacey. It's great to be here. It's great to see you. And thanks very much to the audience for tuning in today as well. Todd, today we're going to talk about uh, the future of hybrid work and how Citrix is delivering a single digital platform to empower secure hybrid work with an integrated solution. Can you talk about that with me today? Yeah, uh, you know, I think you hit kind of the highlight there. What what we see as the future of work strategy is it really involves around delivering one digital workspace platform for our customers to empower secure hybrid work. Really, the goal to free people up to do their best work from anywhere um, with integrated solutions from Citrix that includes our desktop as a service offering, our app delivery and security uh, technology, and collaborative work solutions with partners like uh, Google to help us do that for customers really well. Um, to net it out in short, the Citrix Digital Workspace solutions really are to empower companies to deliver the apps and data their employees need to do their jobs, be as productive as possible, and feel engaged with their work, no matter where they are or what device they're working on. Um, when you think about that value proposition, um, I think Thomas Curian actually uh, said it really well last October at Google Cloud Next when he announced our expanded partnership. Um, he talked about Citrix and Google coming together to really help 
develop the future of hybrid work. Um, I'm talking about things like where we'll help employees boost their productivity. Um, we'll use our joint innovation uh, to help them be engaged um, like they never have been before with the fully integrated solutions that Citrix and Google deliver together. Um, we can create really awesome end-to-end -end experiences for our employees uh, and our customers. Uh, and you know, using the digital workspace platform that we've developed integrated with Google technology is a great way to do that. So how does that uh, translate into specifics for our Google Workspace solution? I'm glad you asked. You know, we've we've been partners for over a decade, I think 12 years of partner now, uh, and we've done a lot of things together. Um, Citrix has been recognized as the leader in, in, in computing virtualization and desktop as a service for over 30 years um, by all of the industry analysts and experts out there. Um, in 2017, we got a lot of demand from customers to begin integrating the other kind of applications that customers uh, had their employees using on a much uh, larger scale, SaaS applications. And so our workspace that we had forever been using for virtualization uh, and DAS, we began to integrate in those SaaS apps right away, as well as mobile apps. And actually, Google was the first partner in 2017 to step up and integrate with us their SaaS applications. So Google Workspace and Citrix Workspace have been joined together since back then. Um, as we have moved along since then, Citrix has moved a lot of our technology onto Google Cloud to help take advantage of Google's cutting edge cloud infrastructure and huge global network. Uh, in fact, um, we're happy to say that our Citrix DAS runs on GCP today with the DAS control plan on GCP as well. So we have 100% Citrix DAS on GCP offering that is actually now available in the Google Cloud marketplace as well. Um, and we integrate in our networking analytics and workspace solutions to that as well with Google today. That's awesome. Let's talk about some of our success stories that are in the market today. Yeah, I love talking about customers who are using our joint solutions to do great stuff. One of my favorites to highlight is the Kingston and Sutton Council in London. Um, they had a goal uh, handed down by the British government to be much more sustainable and reduce their carbon footprint. And back in 2017, they started leveraging Citrix and Google to meet those goals. Um, they actually had really awesome results. Uh, I actually am looking at some of the stats, but they reduced their carbon footprint um, by using our technologies together by the equivalent of 3,700 acres of mature forest. That seems wow. amazing to me. <laughs> uh, and have great savings on electricity as well. Um, but I think one of the great things that was an added benefit of using our joint solutions together um, was that when the pandemic hit, they were really, really ready to move to hybrid work and work from home. In fact, when the lockdown hit uh, in the UK in 2020, they were able to have over 90% of their employees working from home the next day. Um, all they had to do was open their computers and log in uh, to Citrix Workspace, and they had all the tools they needed for them right there. Um, their virtual apps, their desktop as a service, and also Google Workspace. So very easy for them to continue to collaborate uh, and to deliver for the constituents of Kingston and Sutton uh, in London. Um, a great example uh, of our, our joint technology there. How about another example? I love that one. Is there is there another one we can chat about? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Nesty Oil is another one that I, I like talking about quite a bit. In fact, they're a longtime Citrix customer, but because of what they're doing with Citrix and Google, they won the Citrix Customer Innovation Award in 2021. Uh, there's an awesome video about their story on our website as well. I recommend everyone checking out. Uh, but Nesty Oil was a, a company that also had a goal to be more sustainable. Um, and they leveraged an end-to-end -end solution from Citrix and Google that included Chrome Enterprise devices, Citrix Desktop as a Service offering, Google Cloud Platform, and Workspace to be able to deliver a better solution for hybrid work for their employees. It allowed them to do a lot of really cool things like cut down on commute times and commuting in general uh, for their employees, minimize travel, provide better collaboration and access to tools for people even out on things like oil rigs uh, you know, in the North Sea and stuff like that. Uh, that allowed them to help them really cut down their carbon footprint as well. And they actually became one of the 10 most sustainable corporations in the world. Um, through a lot of other work that they were doing as well, but you know, we were part of that initiative for them, our joint solution. Uh, for That's them. awesome. That's yeah. so awesome. 
So Todd, why do you think that this work is so relevant in a time when companies are looking for solutions for remote and hybrid work today? Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a really interesting time for customers and their and their employees um, today, right? I mean, there are so many great tools available to help you do parts of your job better and more productively. Um, but that has also created some challenges for both the users and the administrators at these companies. For the admins, there's a security challenge, an onboarding challenge. How do you provision and deliver these applications to people uh, in a better way? For employees, it creates a, a crunch for them from a work perspective. Um, we've done some studies that have shown the average employee is do, using around 40 different apps to do their job, and that creates a ton of context switching. So. If I'm in one application doing work and I have to switch to another, it often takes almost 30 minutes to get back to that original task. And, you know, that's a lot of drain when you're talking about, you know, working a full day, right? So um, delivering all those things into one place uh, in our digital workspace, um, integrating them with great tools like Google Workspace is allowing us to help um, provide those customers both the better security around all the SaaS apps they want to deliver as well as their virtual apps, um, via Citrix and make it easier for employees to use the things they need to do their job without all that context switching and complexity. So now we can do that um, in a really nice way. It's very reliable, any location, any device, and all of the apps and data you need to do your job right there in the digital workspace. That's great. Todd, now that our customers and prospects want to know more about our solution, how can they find out additional information? Yeah, this is really easy. Just go to citrix.com slash Google. Uh, we have our partner page there. You can read a lot more information about it. You can see that great video I mentioned on Nesty Oil. You can find uh, all the full success story about Kingston and Sutton Council there as well as many other examples of customer success, um, great, the great solutions we're building with Google. Uh, and there's also a really awesome form you can, you can click on and fill out and um, set up a Google Meet with uh, one of our subject matter experts who can tell you a lot more about what we're doing together today. That's great. Todd, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate your time. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time here at the Workspace Summit. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Frank Weigel and I'm the GM for AppSheet here at Google. I'm with uh, Stan Starbo from Carrefour and we'll be chatting with him a little later. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to this breakout session on frontline work as part of our Google Workspace Summit. I'm going to briefly walk you through some ways we're enabling organizations to empower frontline workers with integrated, secure, and streamlined tools. And then we're going to jump into a conversation with Stan, one of our global enterprise customers, to see just how they are realizing their own frontline digital transformation ambitions. When we talk about work, one group that often gets left out of the conversation is actually key to unlocking business value, the frontline workforce. Given the strategic importance and value of frontline workers, modernizing and improving their ability to communicate and collaborate is essential to drive business growth. Leaving the frontline workforce out of digital transformation negatively impacts the employee experience and their productivity. Frontline workers today often find it hard to collaborate and connect with colleagues due to a lack of the right technology and reliance on less efficient and secure ways of connecting. 
This often contributes to higher turnover and burnout and creates serious organizational risk that many companies face today. Frontline workers, in turn, are often the primary and first point of contact for your customers. In a world where customer centricity is of the utmost importance and companies compete on the basis of their customer experience, carefully managing that experience and helping frontline workers make decisions quickly, effectively, and securely is paramount to success. In a recent survey by Tacton, 87% of industry respondents actually noted the importance of digital transformation to achieving their business goals in the coming year. And we know that by improving communication and collaboration tools, frontline workers can expedite decisions making, can better connect with their peers and ultimately help companies run processes more effectively. So why is digital transformation for frontline processes hard? Well, for one, companies with large frontline workforces often use a variety of business tools and technologies uh, that need to integrate seamlessly across backend systems. And frontline workers, furthermore, their expertise in enterprise technology is typically limited. And so, as a result, one key aspect to achieving digital transformation for frontline workers is meeting them where they are and providing dedicated mobile applications that are specific to a process, task, or persona. Doing so abstracts away the complexity and heterogeneous nature of the backend systems needed for those tasks. And these line of business apps, as they're called, also need to be easy to manage, secure, and most importantly, be customized for each business. Because no two companies are the same, and often the processes they implement are a key part of how companies differentiate and optimize their operations. As a result, line of business apps will always need to be customized for each individual company. So how can companies transform their frontline worker experience with custom mobile apps? Well, let me introduce you to the possibilities that AppSheet opens up for workspace customers. To illustrate this, I will walk you through a typical example of how we can help digitally transform a frontline worker task through a custom line of business app created with Google Workspace and AppSheet. Because with AppSheet, custom applications can be created easily and quickly without the complexity of traditional coding. Actually, no code is needed at all. Instead, the business experts can build custom applications without writing code. And it means that AppSheet empowers people who don't have any software development or coding expertise to create high quality applications that run on phones or in web browsers. And so meet Carlos. He is a process manager at a shipping company and Carlos isn't a traditional developer and he isn't familiar with coding, but he understands the business process in great detail. And thanks to no-code app creation with AppSheet, Carlos now can become what we call a citizen developer. Because with AppSheet and Workspace, he can take his business expertise and create custom apps to digitally transform a process all without writing any code. This broadening of who can create custom business apps to non-developers is essential. And given how most IT departments are overloaded and don't have the bandwidth to write more custom apps with traditional methods, for all the parts of the businesses where it's needed. And with AppSheet, it is easy to create custom apps to digitally transform a process and integrate with workspace components like Sheets and app scripts as well. And best of all, it also enables the business process experts to continue to optimize and refine the application without needing to wait for more IT resources. So here you can see the custom app that was built by Carlos. And the purpose of this app is to collect data during the inspection of their company's fleet. It's a, actually a critical part of the process, ensuring the fleet remains fully operational and goods leaving their port of origin end up at their final destination on time uh, and that the fleet has minimal downtime. This process it used to be performed manually with a, with a clipboard um, multiple times throughout the journey and, and given the manual approach of capturing information that way, it took longer and was far more error prone. 
there are a few additional goals for this app outside of the collection of inspection data. One important goal is for the frontline worker who is using the app to be able to share the status and potential issues with various teams at locations around the world. This transportation use case can become pretty complicated on that matter because due to internet connectivity is inter being intermittent because they are literally on a boat. So digital capture of the data also makes it much easier to maintain clean and well-governed data that can track potential problems with equipment and notify the appropriate parties automatically when necessary. Because when the ship reconnects to Wi-Fi, when it connects to the internet, the data collected in the form syncs automatically and updates the company's data to reflect that there were some mechanical issues on the ship. At that point, thanks to AppSheet being integrated with Google Workspace, maintenance can trigger an automatic email with the captured information that can be accessed as a dynamic email in Gmail, or of course, opened as a regular email with any email client. In this way, once the ship reaches the next port, the right materials for maintenance can already be ready to go. That is the power of digital transformation through AppSheet. Now, providing great custom line of business apps to frontline workers is only one aspect of how Google Workspace and AppSheet together help transform how frontline workers can operate. With reliable communication and collaboration, customers are able to be better served at every step of their business process. This is where Google Workspace can really shine. All Workspace apps, of course, and their workflows run securely with enterprise-level governance. And Google Workspace is cloud-native and cloud-only and built on a secure, zero-trust foundation. Built by design to protect your frontline workforce, your data, and your company. It is also mobile first, allowing the frontline workforce to rely on the same applications on any device, no matter where they are, whether it's a laptop, a mobile phone, or a thin terminal with only browser access, for example. Because our browser base born in the cloud approach means that the workforce can collaborate securely from anywhere on the device of their choice. And there's no need to install thick client applications or store sensitive data on multiple devices. With Google, frontline workers can benefit from access to cloud technology, hardware and services that bring collaboration, AI and security together, improving productivity and business outcomes. Google's, Google Workspace's powerful platform allows frontline workers to access their enterprise applications, their custom mobile apps from interfaces they know, and it empowers developers to get more value out of their existing investments. In addition, zero trust is also key. Google actually pioneered zero trust more than a decade ago to protect um, our own infrastructure here at Google. It started as an internal Google initiative to enable every employee to work from untrusted networks without the use of a traditional VPN. We've shifted access controls from the network perimeter to individual users and devices, and thereby allowing employees to work more securely from any location. Very important these days, and really helps to transform work into a truly edgeless world. Our approach is tailored to include and modernize the frontline experience with tools that are intuitive and easy to use. When taken together, Google Workspace and AppSheet can help organizations, no matter the industry, to drive business, employee, and customer value, and support digital transformation initiatives for a better tomorrow. And we're very excited to announce that we have a new frontline offer bringing the best of Google together with a unified and modern set of tools to help drive business value for companies with frontline workforce. Click on the link in the description to learn more. And with all this as context, I'd like to pivot and welcome again our customer Stan from Carrefour to hear more about how uh, they are working at Carrefour to digitally transform their frontline workforce. And so, welcome Stan. Hey, really Frank. appreciate you being here and sharing Carrefour's story with, uh, with us. So, firstly, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Carrefour. 
Hey, Frank. <clears throat> Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so my name is Stan Stabel. I'm the CTO for Carrefour Belgium. Um, some of you might know Carrefour. Maybe some of uh, the people in the audience don't, but um, Carrefour is ba basically a global retailer. Um, well, everyone knows Walmart, right? Well, consider Carrefour um, the Walmart of all the countries. Walmart is not represented. I think that's a great way of putting it. Um, and basically, in a Carrefour, in a hypermarket, um, you can buy anything from a TV to a milk uh, carton, so to say. So you can you can really buy um, almost anything and everything in our stores, but also online. Yeah, no, be, being from Europe myself and having lived in, in uh, quite a few different countries, um, uh, definitely enjoy it, uh, going to Carrefour, whether in Malaysia or um, uh, France or Germany. Um, so tell us a little bit about Carrefour and what are some of your digital transformation goals uh, that impact the frontline workforce and how are we here at Google supporting you in them? All right, well, um, <clears throat> Carrefour, um, we're really on, um, we're embarking on a very large digital transformation of the company, right? Um, we aspire to, to be, um, become and be a, uh, global digital retail leader. Um, and Carrefour historically um, comes from the brick and mortar stores, right? Um, and uh, we're moving into the digital world, so also the online, but nevertheless, for Carrefour, and let me give the example of Belgium. In Belgium, really small country, right? Um, not very large for those who uh, might be able to point us on the, on the world map. But uh, we have about, um, more than 700 stores in Belgium, Carrefour stores. Um, and that means that we have a whole lot of frontline workers um, serving our customers on a daily basis. And basically those people are the ones that make the magic happen within Carrefour. They're the ones that make the customers happy. Um, they're the ones that, that, that are making sure that all the produce is on the shelves in the stores. Um, that the stores are clean, that the customers um, get answers to all their questions, and so on and so forth. So for us, the efficiency of those frontline workers is very important. Um, efficiency means that we need to have them connected as well at all times. Um, and when I joined Carrefour uh, three years ago, we started embarking on that digital transformation journey. Um, we, we became, um, you know, a, a customer of Google, um, as, as you might all know. Um, and, yeah, I know. Thanks. Um, you know, and we embarked on that journey together. Um, and one of the big game changers um, for us was that we were able to suddenly, in a very efficient manner, um, get communication out to those frontline workers. You know, we were not bound to PCs anymore. We we, we could really deliver um, mails and everything on you know mobile phones um, in the stores. Uh, we also have a mobile for all uh, policy, which means that every worker we're in Carrefour has the ability to get a mobile phone. And and there was a a use for that. The use case was to get them connected. And once you have them connected, you can give them the ability um, to indeed, um, you know, use very uh, simple to use apps that, that could simplify um, their daily work. Simple apps like, you know, being able on a simple, um, uh, on, on your phone to scan a barcode and see the stock, the price, whenever the price tag's not right, or a customer has a question like, yeah, it's, I thought that was an advertisement this week, uh, um, or when is the shelf going to be replenished? Um, things that before they needed to sometimes run to a PC, type in the barcode that they wrote on a piece of paper. I mean, those things are now made possible. Um, and, and I was very excited when you, when you started talking about, you know, the zero trust, um, you know, initiative of Google and, and, um, last year we also embarked on that. So we, um, we, we started rolling out beyond Corp. Um, and the goal is 
to indeed um, bring the security, you know, um, the, the, the typical fortress, protected fortress principle of security, take that away and, and bring it to the front line uh, to the users, uh, provide them with mobile apps um, that are protected. It's, it's all very secure, but um, it's so much simpler to log on. Um, we, you know, people um, can, can, depending on which app they use, so context-aware security, that's what it's about. Uh, people can, um, very simple, I mean, in a very simple manner, log on to the apps that, that um, don't require, like, the highest level of security. We're not requiring them every time, again, log in a multi-factor and so on and so forth when they're accessing information that is more, um, you know, uh, fragile. Um, we obviously ask them to do that. Um, the, the use of workspace in general, uh, Google Workspace, you know, enabled us to, um, you know, move away from the need of having almost a PC for all in the stores um, to making it all mobile and really bringing it to the real front line because the store workers are the front line. But if they have to go to the back end of the store to go sit behind a PC to look something up, they're not enabled anymore. They're disabled almost. So. Um, we wanted to turn that around and really, you know, um, create that, that, that change. And that for us is digital transformation, because that's the only thing, um, that we live for is make the end customer happy. And in order to do that, you have to make it the working environment for the people closest to that customer. And, and to be honest, that's not the headquarter people, right? Um, those are the people in the source. Um, those are the people on your ship, like you explained in your example. Uh, those are the ones um, that are doing, sorry to say, but the real work. Um, and you have to give them the ability to be efficient and uh, as efficient as possible. And that will create a smile on, on the faces of the customers. Um, and uh, it will make, you know, that will make your company, so to say. Sorry if I rattle on and on, but you know, as you can hear, I'm I'm pretty excited about the project. And it's a very exciting topic. I, I couldn't agree more. I think uh, you know, as you mentioned, it really is transforming pretty fundamental things about how um, how businesses interact with their customers or how the actual like frontline tasks get done. I, I'm curious. Can you tell me a little bit more? What was the reception from the, you know, from your 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 store employees as they now were able to switch, you know, to um, mobile devices? And it sounds like you even helped provide them where necessary. What was their reaction? Well, it, it obviously is a is a big transformation, and and providing those devices alone is not. I mean, it's it, it doesn't do a thing. It's like giving like uh, people a. Uh, piece of hardware to play with, uh, but it's the applications that you provide on there. Those are the ones that, you know, make the change happen. That's also our strategy, actually. Our One of our biggest transformation goals in terms of digital um, is to make those frontline apps, let, let me call them, <laughs> as efficient, but as versatile as possible and as light as possible, because Look around us. I mean, the world is changing on, on a yearly basis. And I, I personally have the feeling that the last three years, I mean, yeah, it's going exponentially as fast. You know, we had, we had the corona crisis. Uh, we have now the war in Ukraine. Um, and, and it is changing greatly the way people behave, the need of certain people, and so on and so forth. Um, so the old way of doing business and creating like monolithical course with like very hard to change processes and apps um, cast in stone, like spending millions of euros to create this like frontline kind of worker site. That's not the way um, that we should be doing business anymore. We, we should be able to very easily fast adjust to the changing needs of the customer um, and you know low code no code apps um, small applications really creating a dent in the way people work 
for me, that's the way forward. And that strong monolithical background, that core still needs to be there, definitely. But all your customizations, your, your small processes that really change the working day of a person, um, you know, we want to bring them to the front and make them as flexible as possible. And also, I mean, if your investment is a lot lower, um, you have a much more room to experiment. Um, you have much more room to give an ever, I mean, a workforce that's ever growing younger and younger, which is normal. I mean, you know, or not younger and young, younger, that, that, that's the wrong way of saying it. I mean, becoming more and more digital because, you know, you have all those younger people coming in and obviously they're more digital than the older ones and there's nothing bad about it, but their expectations are a lot higher because they're like, hey, I can do this at home. I can do this on my phone. Why do I still have to do this on paper at my work? It's so inefficient. So we, we want to be able to really fastly create those apps. Um, and, and, and if we don't need them anymore, we'll throw them away. I mean, if you, there's, there's a whole, there's a big difference throwing like, you know, 5,000 euro for a away versus like 50 or a hundred thousand euro. And if that 5,000 can bring us further, um, although if it's for half a year and, and you multiply that by the amount of people using it, I mean, you're, you're, you're creating ROIs right there. And then and if, if after half a year, you know, the audience is changing or the needs are changing. You don't need to bother too much pushing it onto people. You can just let it go and say, okay, fine. We, we had use of it and, and, and we'll move on to something better, different. Yeah, that, that flexibility and agility it adds is something we really have seen a lot with, with a lot of our customers, you know, for example, around uh, uh, vaccination efforts around Corona, right? To kind of points you mentioned earlier, we saw a lot of companies using uh, something like AppSheet to go and, you know, uh, help with return to office as well, something that's happening in a lot of places, right? Uh, these months as well. All these like business processes that, as you say, might only be relevant for like a few months and where traditionally like, you know, uh, getting an SI to build a, a, a mobile app custom for it would be very expensive. Now it really makes sense to build it because of the much lower effort and the much um, greater ease. Now, on this topic, so I know that in Carrefour, you are really, I think, um, at the forefront often of adopting things like uh, low-code, no-code, and generally really engaged in digital transformation. I'm, I'm wondering, do you have any kind of best practices um, that work for you in Carrefour on how to uh, um, enable the company to, to kind of keep up with that change and how to approach um, digital transformation so that it um, gets impact across the company? Any best practices or approach that you want to share? Um, yeah, I think, you know, the reason, one of the reasons why it's working within Carrefour is we're, we're working with a great team of people that that really know which way we want to go and 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 they they feel it, they believe it. it it's a lot about creating the right culture, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then, then, obviously, there's we're talking about a lot of people in Carrefour that you have to move towards a new way of working. Um, and a lot of people are used to a way of working that we want to make more efficient, digitalize. So there's always a bit pushback. That that's more than normal. Um, but again, there, I think that, or we, we believe that if we are able to really point out, um, you know, efficiencies by the means of small apps that, that are easy to comprehend. I mean, if tomorrow, um, and, and I'm not going to use the vendor's name, but you have to learn people how to use a very big uh, ERP program or whatsoever, I mean, that... that there's like months of training going into that. Um, if it's like an app like the one you showed, or um, we have multiple examples ourselves as well, then, I mean, if it takes like five minutes to adopt and if it's very intuitive, and often also if it's co-designed uh, by the people using it, mm -hmm. um, that makes a big difference. If it's something you push down from the top and you say, that's the most efficient process, you know, 
we know it better than anyone else um, then um, often um, <laughs> you know uh, you get a lot of pushback if you work together with those people and you show them how they can really easily build apps and you can have a fast turnaround if if, if you know before we embarked on on the local no code journey um, if we um, and and started um, you know the Google tools, um, people had a question, great idea. We came back with, oh, we need like 200,000 euro in four months or five months with a team of five to, to build it. I mean, the fun was over. Uh, they're also like, oh, by the, by the time I get that one approved, you know, um, if now we can come back and say like, hey, great idea, um, you know, give us five days. We have, you know, an MVP ready and, and let's work on it together to make it more efficient, roll it out in the store on a park and so on. I mean, that really creates the appetite um, of the people to, to step in and, and, and to go on that co-creation effort almost. Great. Actually on that, on that topic, one last question. Um, you talked about, how this allows um, you to join the people with the kind of business process expertise. So the ones often executing the process and really knowing what works, what not, and how to tweak it. What have you found are good ways to include them into this process? Inquire them, move them, you know, um, it, it's wrong of saying it, but guilt by association, right? <laughs> um, you, you you take them inside uh, into the project team and you help them um you know or or well basically you don't help them they help you designing the application right um and and it's also a way of picking the right people it's always like that right in in, in any project you know the people made the success of the project it's like that the people make the success of the company um, and so on. It's all about the people. So you select the right people, the right audience. Um, yes, there's. You sometimes also have to select the right store to to test it on, and 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 um, the store with the right problems that the application can solve. For example, people that are open minded and say like, yeah, you know, I want to do this, and and then, you know, as you go along, um, more people start to use it and start to see the benefit of that particular application, whatever that might be, at some point you cross that critical mass, you know, mm. point um, and, and, and suddenly, you know, it's like, it, it, it's rolling by itself and you don't need to push it up anymore. And then it's from there, it's all downhill and in a good way of, you know, <laughs> uh, it, 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 I mean that in a good way. So you, you, there's less effort needed to, to make it all happen. Excellent. Hey, thanks so much, Stan, uh, for, for taking the time to join us here. I, I loved hearing, you know, kind of the, your experience of really rolling this out and how it digitally transforms Carrefour and how Workspace and AppSheet are part of enabling uh, that transformation. So thanks so much for sharing this. Thanks so much uh, for everyone to listening to our session. I hope um, uh, you learned something and I'm looking forward to um, I welcome you to see you use more workspace and more AppSheet together. Thanks so much all and have a great day.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Google Cloud Workspace Summit. My name is Dan Montoya, and I'm a workspace specialist here at Google Cloud. Today, we're going to hear from one of our amazing healthcare customers, SCL Health, and they will be talking about their journey to optimize patient and provider experiences through a more secure, reliable, and integrated productivity and collaboration tool. Working together with our premier workspace partner, SADA, we fully migrated over 19,000 SCL associates to Google Workspace. And to tell you that amazing story, please allow me to introduce Michael Ames, Managing Director of Vertical Markets at SADA, and Christine Weaver, Manager of Cloud Technologies at SCL Health. Dan, thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today. I'm Michael Ames with SADA. SADA is a Google Cloud reseller and consultancy. We're unique in that we are all in on Google Cloud, meaning that Google Cloud is all we do, and we do all things Google Cloud. Uh, today, I'm, I'm looking forward to giving you a chance to get to know Christine a little bit better as we talk about the experience of SCL Health implementing and deploying Google Workspace within their healthcare system. Christine, will you take just a minute to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. I am the Cloud Technologies Manager from the cloud, the delivery uh, technology delivery team of SCL Health, and it's really great to be here today. I'm excited to talk to you about what we've done. It, it's tempting in these um, in these kinds of conversations to go go back to the beginning and give the chronological story of what you did first, second, and third, but I think for this audience, they'd really like to hear about the impact. Could you start by telling us? What may have fundamentally changed in your organization uh, based on your implementation of Google Workspace? Yeah, so when we started the transition to Google Workspace, we were looking to optimize our patient and provider experiences. Um, we were looking for more uh, secure, efficient, and an integrated productivity collaboration tool. Uh, we wanted that to be able to connect in real time across the organization. We have about 19,000, uh, over 19,000 caregivers, and we needed to be able to collaborate and share that critical information quickly. Um, so we found that this truly helped, especially when we were running into our pandemic response, when we suddenly over a weekend had a transition, folks that had been working uh, internally and move them to an external situation. So we were grateful that we were on uh, Google Workspace at that point because our teams could cr you know, cross the team barrier and collaborate easily with other teams and easily access Google Workspace on different kinds of devices externally. And we also were able to use this to support our incident management team collaboration for our COVID response as well. One of the things I think is interesting is that at SCL, this wasn't just the Google Workspace implementation project, but, but it was attached to a broader initiative around culture of collaboration. Would you tell us just a little more about that? Yeah, we started our campaign as the culture of collaboration because that was the big transition that we were looking to make with Google Workspace. Um, we were you know, moving through a drive migration. We were adopting applications from Google, changing formats to the native Google format. And we were also looking to, to eliminate some of the redundancy with other applications within. But primarily, we were trying to empower our caregivers and uh, all our other teams as well to be able to easily share files, easily communicate with each other in the various ways that Google Workspace allows. You know, it's so important because I think we can get hyper-focused on, here's a cool technology. And if we just put that technology out there with people, then magical things will happen. But in fact, you need to get people thinking differently. You need to get them thinking about how they collaborate, how they work together. Um, there's, a, there's a change management component to this that often gets overlooked. Can you tell us a little bit about how it is that you actually implemented those changes in processes and thinking and, and adoption within your organization? Yeah, so we actually relied uh, heavily on the framework that SADA had presented to us about that change management process. And one of the things that primarily uh, supported the folks at the front of the line, if you will, uh, out there using the tools was to develop uh, a Google change leader group who also worked with Google, what we call Google Guides. And there was about 100 of them, as well as our executive leadership who were presenting this message from the top down of this culture of collaboration. And those folks that we met with, with uh, the change leaders and the Google Guides 
we're in the front lines helping people make this transition and keeping that in the forefront that we are trying to do this so that we can collaborate much easier. So that message was coming through our newsletters, through all the channels that we had available to us, but also that personal touch of having these folks available who they worked with as change leaders in Google Guides. Uh, that you know, so smart, and having having been witness to many of these rollouts and transitions in different kinds of organizations, um, it was smart of SCL to to understand that this is going to be more than just if we deploy it, they will come, but that you have to work with the human side of this, get people to think differently, act differently in their work, and I do think that's one of the reasons why SCL has been successful in this change. One, 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 you know, uh, pivot I want to make here, though, is it's easy in a conversation like this for people to think about people who are basically office workers and how Google Workspace is valuable to them as they sit in front of a computer making documents all day. But that isn't the work mode of, of physicians and other healthcare providers and caregivers. The SCL Health took on an interesting program in, in caregiver mobility. Could you take a minute and talk about that to give us that sort of caregiver provider side of the, of the, of the picture? Yes. So uh, another initiative that was begun had to do with kind of releasing the caregiver from the workstation. And the way that we were doing this is we were using applications uh, from our EHR, as well as some other applications that they use on a daily basis, and putting them into onto a mobile phone. Uh, we did a pilot of a number of different phone types. And in the end, the pilot proved that the Pixel uh, was the best phone for this situation. We found out it was more responsive and lighter and the battery lasted longer than was anticipated. And then it also opened up a lot of other opportunities for future integrations um, using the smartphone. And one of the best things about this is we went back to the caregivers who were able to use this in the caregiver mobility pilot, which is now rolling out to all our sites. Um, in production, and um, we were able to say, you know, what? Give us some information about how this impacted you. And some of the feedback is: one person was mentioning that they barely use their computer as they're walking around; they're just using the phone. And then another caregiver was mentioning that they went into a, a patient's room to provide service, and the computer was out, but it didn't really impact them because they were able to access and deal with the uh, medication administration that they were working on through the program on their phone and that it worked really well. Amazing, I love it. And, and anything we can do in the day to take the edge off of the difficulty and the overhead and the complexity for clinicians and caregivers, I, I think is worth it, right? That's, yes, that's and free up as much time as we can so they can spend it with the patient. Chris, last question. I know that you've reached out to learn directly from your users what their experiences have been. What, what have been the results of that? Yes, yeah, so we did put out a survey back to the through the Google group and the Google guides to the end users um, out on the front lines to get their input. And what I was pleased to see in that response from the survey is we set out to do uh, a culture shift with a culture of collaboration. And every single comment coming back from the survey, from all the different areas in the hospitals and, and elsewhere in departments was that we hit the mark and that Google Workspace allowed them to be empowered, to share things easier and to work daily uh, to improve what's going on in our organization in a very easy way. And they are very happy with that collaboration that Google Workspace provides. And with that excellent outcome, we'll hand it back to Dan to close us out. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Christine. And thanks to everyone for attending the Google Workspace Summit. We hope you re enjoy the rest of your day.
welcome to the Google Workspace Summit, where we're going to be talking about how to make proactive and resilient security accessible to your business. My name is Andy Wen. I'm the product director for Workspace Privacy, Security, and Compliance. And I'm joined here with, by John McDonald, who is our practice leader for North America, Google Workspace, and Google, Google Cloud, as well as Jeff Reiner, who is the CISO of Castlight Health. We're so pleased to have them all here. Before, as we get started, I wanted to talk about hybrid work. We've been living through this over the past two years, and it's clear that this is going to continue in some fashion. In fact, uh, the shift to hybrid work as it continues will have ongoing challenges around three areas. The first is around our distributed workforce. Our staff and our users are all over the place, and they are not physically in the same place, which makes it much more difficult to patch their devices, and this results in security vulnerabilities if these aren't managed correctly. The second related to devices is there's many more of them. There's multiple laptops, mobile devices, and with these kinds of devices, they have various types of ways to, to reach into the network and access the resources that are necessary. This leads to what we're gonna call VPN confusion. The third is a shift uh, of work toward outside the enterprise. In prior days, most organizations were organized around a castle and moat architecture, where you could set policies based on whether you're inside or outside the moat. Well, that has radically changed because now um, we are on many different kinds of devices in, in, in a highly distributed way. So this is no longer sustainable and makes it much more difficult to scale VPN usage and leads again to even more VPN confusion. On top of all of this is a foundation of legacy tools that really wasn't built for this kind of work. And in fact, this, this foundation of legacy tools is, is increasingly risky. What we are finding is that over 90% of malware is delivered via malicious emails and attachments. And these, this type of malware is specifically focused on Microsoft Windows, which has eight times the number of attacks. And 83% of all attacks are targeting Windows. We've already seen uh, throughout time that over 100 vulnerabilities for Microsoft Exchange have, ha have happened in the past decade compared to zero that have been exposed through Gmail. And the core reason for this is our cloud-first approach, which ensures that software is always up to date. And in addition to that, we're always able to employ the latest machine learning and anti-phishing tools that protect your organization and your users from malware. Over 80% of uh, reported security incidents are due to phishing attacks, and over 80% of hacking breaches include brute force and, and the use of lost or stolen credentials. So again, the, the foundation of legacy tools really creates vulnerabilities and risk for your organization. And the impact and cost of these cyber attacks are really grouped into two areas. The first is short term the downtime, the recovery costs, and the security forensics that you need to employ to recover from an attack. But much more significant are the long-term effects and costs. Those are around a compromised regulatory status, stolen IP and other high-value data, uh, loss and impact to your brand, loss of trust, as well as the financial and legal responsibility you may have from these kinds of uh, cyber attacks. These are really uh, major costs and key challenges for organizations as we approach hybrid work. And so I'd like to bring in my peer, John McDonald, who's really going to talk to us about taking a different approach. Thanks so much, Andy. Uh, it's absolutely time to take a different approach. And especially as we consider the points that Andy was just making, we need to create a resilient plan to account for various hybrid work considerations, whether those are the device being off network, there are a number of factors, and we're gonna go into that a little bit today. At Google, we wanna help. We've successfully built advanced cloud native defenses from the ground up, from our server businesses around the world at massive scale. We've put together a cloud-first security bundle centered around secure collaboration and zero trust. And we're going to drill in on zero trust today. We're focused on building capabilities that bring greater security by default to every application we run with you. As you look to transform your applications in the cloud, you'll find these capabilities improve your security posture in a way that simply adding another standalone security tool just can't help you with. So two things, it's cloud-first, 
not network first. Very important. The second is it's browser first, not client first. And this is key. Now, when I'm talking about scale, because we're going to talk about scale with data, I don't just mean money and human capital that we're pouring into this in our infrastructure. The sheer amount of data that we have at our disposal to train machine learning models is mind boggling. And I talk to customers about it every day. We index the entire visible internet every few minutes or so, which means we can detect malicious web pages in real time. It also gives us the capability for, across our 1 billion active daily users in Gmail to train our spam filters all at once in zero, zero hour and even zero minute response time. So as soon as we detect a single malicious email, we can protect your entire user base. Any machine learn, learning model is only as good as the data you have is the real point here. Everyone has telemetry, but ours is better. The proof is in the pudding. Think about search proven it's better. Google is recognized as a leader in machine learning and artificial intelligence as a result of all of these properties that touch billions of users on a daily basis. An example I can give you is a good lawyer versus a bad lawyer. They both have the same law as a source of truth, but they're only as good as their interpretation and therefore uh, will make more useful application of the law to help their customers. It's the same thing here. So zero trust is absolutely key. And you're going to hear this term, and it's become a bit of a buzzword. But Google pioneered zero trust more than a decade ago to protect our own infrastructure, starting as an internal Google initiative to enable every employee to work from untrusted networks without the use of traditional VPN. We've shifted access controls from the network perimeter to individual users and devices, thereby allowing employees to work more securely from any location. And this transformed work into a truly edgeless world. With our cloud-first approach, you're secure by design and consistently updated, so no patching on your side. There's no need for local devices, native applications, or email attachments, which can be prone to phishing and other cyber threats, as Andy just highlighted. They're actually the surface of attack and the most common area for attacks. To reinforce our zero trust capabilities, we're adding intelligent content inspection and detectors. This enables you to bring ring fence uh, to most of you, your sensitive company data with additional controls for extra security without any software or steps for your users. And so this is extra security without extra steps, and it's absolutely critical. If we look at any security models that are put into play, we need to ensure that it's not confusing or creating too much friction to the user. With anything we've, decide, we've designed, we've realized that if there is friction, users will default to other activities that they know will work. It may create symptoms like shadow IT or working with different applications outside the vetted set of tools that our IT teams are deciding for us. Creativity loves constraint and it will always take on new forms. As simple as we can make these security models and as transparent, the more adoption we will see and the ease of usability for our end users, which is key in a hybrid work environment. An example of innovation, if you take a look at your most sensitive data and intellectual property, encryption has been around for some time, but cloud native encryption where you hold the key is something rather revolutionary. So now you can encrypt content with keys that only your company controls. Not even Google can access that information, which is absolutely key here. So this can protect against government surveillance, provide the highest degree of privacy and security that's easy for your users and for you to use and access, again, preventing Google from going in and looking at information if provided with an administrative subpoena. As an example, this has been a push and a requirement for some time, but something that was very, very difficult to achieve in the cloud without substituting or compromising the powerful capabilities of collaboration, search, and all of the wonderful things that we're gaining from a, from a pure cloud model. So with that, we're highlighting a number of things here, but we thought it would be best to bring in one of our customers who has begun their journey, embarked upon this journey with us, 
has been a customer for some time, and I'd like to introduce you to my new friend, Jeff Breiner, who is the CISO for Castlight Health. And I'm sure we're gonna be working together a lot more, Jeff, now that you know who I am and I know who you are. But just to summarize Castlight, so Castlight's a leader in digital health innovation, that focuses on increasing engagement from members to drive improved healthcare outcomes, a better experience and lower costs. They've been a Google Workspace customer since about 2012 and have recently partnered with Google Cloud to digitally transform their legacy on-premise technologies and move to a zero trust security architecture. So again, the zero trust topic. So with that, welcome, Jeff. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to do this with us. I really appreciate it. Hey, great. Thanks, John. Thanks, Andy. And thanks everyone else for tuning in today. It's really great to be here and talk about one of my favorite subjects. One of my favorite topics as well. Um, so I mean, digging right into it, I gave a bit of a highlight that you've been a customer since 2012 and you recently embarked on this, this journey and specifically focusing around zero trust and moving from legacy on-prem. Can you tell me a little bit more about that journey in your own words for the, the uh, audience? Yeah, sure. Uh, for us, it probably started like most people, especially during COVID. Uh, we've got to get out of the office, get everyone to home. Uh, and so how does that work? Uh, and a lot of it started with just even basic uh, physical issues, like we've uh, got a call center, a lot of people with desktop machines. So do we even have enough laptops uh, to issue to folks? And do those laptops have all the right uh, uh, software on them, security controls, that sort of thing? Uh, and then, you know, once you've kind of passed that emergency onto, you know, now we're working uh, in a hybrid environment, uh, whether we like it or we're used to it or not. Uh, how do you deal with the physical security uh, uh, devices or controls or things that were in your environment that you were sort of relying on? So a lot of places will take sort of a magic box uh, approach to thing. You have to route traffic through a magic box in order to get visibility or make sure that a thing is functional. VPN is a good example of that. Uh, and so uh, taking a look at those things and making sure that we understand how the, the new shift to remote work. So a lot of uh, a lot of focus on that. A lot of focus on making sure that um, that work is possible uh, for people even when they're disconnected from maybe Maybe things like Active Directory controllers, how do you change your password, you know, those sort of things, just logistics of every day, uh, dealing with those sort of transactions and making them possible in that kind of environment has been a lot of our focus. No, that's fantastic context. I really appreciate it. You mentioned VPN in there, and I, I'm going to pick at that one a little bit. Andy mentioned it earlier as well around VPN confusion. Can you talk to me a little bit about those challenges and drill in a little bit more? Yeah, sure. You know, probably most companies are used to now, you've got a, a plethora of apps that you use to run your business. You've got HR uh, apps, you've got uh, SaaS systems you use to book plane flights or pay for expenses or bills or CRM systems. Uh, and all those are typically not over VPN, just a thing you access. Even email nowadays, typically a web app uh, that you just go to and access it. So when you do have VPN controls and Castlight's been in a data center for a long time, you can imagine a lot of things that we have to have behind VPN uh, just to make them accessible. Uh, it becomes confusing for folks. It's like, oh, I, uh, I need uh, uh, to just access my email. All I need is a browser. But in order to get this one particular application, I've got to have a VPN client. Am I up to date? Is it compatible with all the things I have to make it work? Uh, do I need a special MFA token just for that? Uh, and so the confusion about, you know, I have 150 apps that I use to, to get my work done during the day, maybe two, 10, 20 of those are on VPN. How do I make sure that uh, I'm on the right settings just to be able to go do this uh, one individual piece of work? It leads to that VPN can confusion, especially if you're moving things around as well, uh, can very, very confusing for uh, end users to figure out how just to access their apps. Um, I talked a little bit about robust machine learning and AI models, the sheer amount of data that we have to access and make some of these decisions for you. How does this help you in your role as you, you know, analyze risk from every angle? Yeah, yeah. You know, I was thinking about it. Uh, what it allows us to do is pay attention to the output and not necessarily the machinery. A lot of uh, kind of traditional security has been about the machinery of security making sure it works, make sure it's functional, make sure it's up to date, uh, those sort of things. But when it's just sort of baked into the cloud for you, you can pay attention to the output uh, and kind of shift your focus to the data science aspects of it. Uh, so when I was thinking over the weekend, uh, one of the uh, uh, 
easiest features, frankly, that I really love in Google Workspace is that in the audit log, there's a little flag for every login called is suspicious, true or false. It's a Boolean flag. And you can build an entire security program around that if you'd like uh, and just kind of shift to data science. You can do is suspicious executive login inspection every day and just go make sure those folks are okay. Or you can do it based on, you know, just people have access to sensitive data. So being able to, you know, shift your focus from the machinery to the output uh, of those sort of models is really, really fantastic and, and really allows you to, to move your security program to the right direction and pay less attention to the gears of it. I love the way you frame that because my next question for you was going to be around uh, the administration and how you're able to shift your focus because we definitely we want to put the controls in your hands to make decisions around how your users access and from where and how you place controls around content regardless of where that exists in the ecosystem. But everything else should be handled uh, on your behalf. It's nice to see that you're able to pivot to other areas and to your point, focus on the output. So I love, I love the way you frame that. Yeah, that's a big part of our move to the cloud is to, to allow us to take advantage of things that we just couldn't put together. There's no way we could do machine learning models of the entire internet <laughs> to figure out whether a login was okay or not. Uh, just not a thing that we've got the uh, the scale to do. And of course, it's, you know, it's the same reason people move from a data center to the cloud uh, so they can stop maintaining physical servers and they can move their focus towards more high value work uh, and kind of have that uh, just be taken care of for them. So it's the same sort of thing from a security perspective in this case. 100%. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I still have another question for you, though. There's so many people here that are tuning in that are about to embark on a journey uh, that you're, you're pretty far along already. And I'm sure some folks are looking for advice, especially people who are running legacy on-prem infrastructure and looking to get it to the cloud, folks that have interest in zero trust or potentially folks that are reliant uh, on, on a mix of those ecosystems is still challenged with that hybrid worker. What advice would you give to others that are starting to plan their risk strategies for the coming years? It's a two-parter. And the second piece being, how did you how did you garner support from your, your leadership peers so that they could understand the risk metric and understand why you needed to uh, implement these changes? Yeah, sure. Maybe I'll answer them all in one. <laughs> uh, okay. for, me, for me, it's always a uh, people process technology uh, sort of equation. Right? Start with the people, focus on the user journey that you're trying to facilitate, uh, and then focus on the, the technology uh, portions of that. But if you can uh, combine those together, like I'm combining the answer to your two-part question <laughs> uh, into one, you've got a real sell. If I can say with this technology, I can make all of these user journeys easier. I can make it easier for people to find apps. I can make it less confusing for them. I can uh, ease the burden of security as well. It's not as hard to manage uh, logons and find out which ones are the ones you got to drill into. And if you can solve all those problems sort of simultaneously by adopting a technology, you've got a real winner. That's really easy to sell. I love it. People process technology. Is that trademarked? Is that coming out in your in your book, or can I steal that? I have many tweets that uh, that re revise that over time, uh, just to reflect over time to, to current events, how if you focus on people, process, then technology, uh, you would have avoided that situation. I love it. I mean, it's part of our design and our thinking that goes into things. We consider the user first to the point we were making earlier. If there's too much friction, the users abandon it anyway. So I love seeing someone in your position that, that has that mindset. I understand that what you have met many CISOs over the years, uh, made some great friends and the job, the position you have is is incredibly difficult because you're tasked with looking at risk from every angle. So I, I truly appreciate Jeff, you spending the time with us today. Um, our viewers I know are probably appreciative. You're probably gonna get some pings and reaches out on LinkedIn, sure. but thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Yeah, thank you. Excellent, and for everyone, of you out there. Andy, thank you so much for the opening. We really appreciate your time as well. And for everyone else that's viewing, thanks so much for attending Workspace Summit. We hope you enjoy the rest of it and we look forward to hearing from you. We'll talk to you soon.
Thank you for joining us today. I'm Joshua Hazlett, a Strategic Technology Partner Manager for Security Partnerships here at Google Cloud. Joining me are Steve Januario, the Vice President of Digital Experience, and Phil Beamer, the IT Systems Engineer for Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks is both a customer of Google Cloud and one of our top ISV partners, offering a wide range of security solutions that tightly integrate with Google Cloud offerings. Today, we're here to focus on Palo Alto Networks as a customer of Google Cloud, and specifically, their adoption of Google Workspace. Welcome, Steve and Phil. Based on what you've shared with me, Palo Alto Networks has an innovative way of supporting your workforce and the choices that employees make on where they work and reside. And this started with a shift to temporary remote work a few years ago, and now has become a permanent facet of your culture, expanding into a completely hybrid workplace. As I understand it, a critical factor in supporting this new philosophy was maintaining effective collaboration and access for your employees in this fast-paced environment. So I'm curious, Steve, how has Google work, Workspace helped in your journey to create this collaborative employee experience? Thank you, Josh. Uh, as you said, the number one reason for us to moving to G Suite, now Workspace, was for collaboration. Being able to you know, communicate or collaborate on documents, slides, sheets, uh, you name it, um, from anywhere, from any device, it was, was the number one reason for us, for us moving over. Fast forward to us being in the pandemic. Now we're all at home. We're not able to walk over and talk to each other or be in conference rooms. We had to do this remote. Luckily, we'd already started flexing some of those muscles because we'd already moved over. I can't imagine people moving over during the pandemic. That would have been much more difficult. But for us, it was a breath of fresh air. It was a sigh of relief that we already had that established and it really helped us with the pandemic. What a great experience for your users. Uh, but I, I'm curious, what about your IT teams? Supporting the rollout, onboarding, administration with a completely hybrid workforce? Phil, maybe you can share your perspective for us. Yeah, that's a great question. And it was, it was certainly a shift um, administering a, a, a workforce like this. But, you know, at the end of the day, Google Workspace allowed us to integrate our own tools like, uh, like XOR, for instance. XOR was able to help us automate a lot of our administrative tasks, um, user termination, uh, deep provisioning, repurpose of licensing. And being able to do that or get those fundamentals down really helped us shift into the administration of a hybrid work environment. You still need to ship laptops. Um, but if we have our big blocking and tackling down, it's easy for us to support, um, you know, do we have two M&As, Steve, during the pandemic that we were able to onboard and merge? Um, so being able to work and automate those playbooks um, using our own XOR certainly helped. I think we were the first company to do an M&A right after the pandemic started. I think it was within one month of us going, um, going home. And, and again, back to what you said, all that time saving with the deprovisioning and provisioning of licenses and, and the ease that it, that we had in collaborating, even on projects and so forth, that was very important for us to be able to do those M and A's and make those M and A's seem seamless. Number one, I mean, everyone was already at home that, that, you know, they were worried about the, the COVID and the pandemic. Now imagine you're being, you know, you're being purchased by another company and you have to, learn this new stuff called G Suite, if they weren't on it, we made it, this made it simple. We, we, we had it nailed down and we saved a lot of time. People didn't have to send computers from their homes because we were able to focus on zero touch provisioning because we had so much extra time. It, it was, it, it didn't feel like we even skipped a beat when we went home. Really impressive the way you guys were able to, you know, be agile and uh, adopt a new technology and roll it out to a wide range of users. Uh, one of the things that came up there was security, um, which is obviously a very important consideration for Palo Alto Networks. And that sentiment is amplified even further when you think about the hybrid work environment that you guys have. Um, so I'm curious, Steve, how was your adoption of Google Workspace helping to maintain security while allowing for that effective collaboration? I think you even branded your migration? Yeah, we did. I mean, as you know, Workspace used to be called G Suite, so we named it the Sweet Life. We even had candy that we gave out on the day we went live. Um, but 
you know, now, well, once we went home to, it became the secure life. We, because G Suite made it so easy for us to move into a, a remote work environment, we were able to really focus on security. And we had, we, the, by partnering up with our, with our Google reps and so forth, we were able to be way more secure than we were with our previous products. And this is because Google makes it very easy to turn every little toggle and switch throughout their systems. And as a result, we, we sat down with our InfoSec team, had long meetings with them and our reps from Google, and we made it just perfect, just exactly how we needed it to be. So we were way more secure, as I said, than we were previously with the other products we had. So many meetings, Steve. And, you know, we were, we were boosting collaboration, right, uh, using Google Drive as much as possible, using Google Workspace in the core suite. And, you know, our end users are aware of the level of, the, the level of ease like it takes to start collaborating within Google Workspace and in Google Drive. And it's really easy to, to try to push that and have them inherently adopt it. But our admins, our InfoSec, our SOC, are now starting to see some of, uh, some of in, into how our end users are actually collaborating, who they're sharing with. Are they downloading things too much, right? Is something a little wonky in this area? Yeah. So, you know, it was great to have our end users be able to collaborate but it was also great to have our admins, InfoSec, SOC, be able to see how our users were collaborating. So that was a, a definitely, definitely a plus. Very nice. So staying on the topic of security, it seems to me that you've set kind of a benchmark uh, of how Palo Alto Networks leverages your own solutions with Workspace. Phil, can you share how you've applied your own solutions uh, to provide complete end-to-end -end security with your Workspace deployment? Definitely. With, um, you know, with Palo Alto's products, XOR, I had mentioned before, um, you know, if a user leaves the company, we can terminate their account or suspend it in Google Workspace in seconds and you, using an automated playbook. So XOR is great in that fashion, um, automating administrative tasks. But our SaaS security is something that is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's been a game changer. Um, Google provides you a lot of auditing and a lot of reporting on applications that are, are being leveraged by your end users. But with our SaaS security, we're able to dial in and, and leverage some of that reporting in a more heuristic and um, in, in, in a more um, strategic way. So we're starting to look and audit applications that we have already trusted in, in Google Workspace, and maybe we need to move them to limited, or maybe we need to move them to blocked. So our, our friends and nerds at InfoSec and SOC do love uh, the reporting that SaaS security. Um, and it keeps us busy because we're constantly trying to audit those applications because applications change, uh, vendors change. And, and we need to make sure that if that integration have hook, has hooks into our Google Workspace environment, we know how um, that application is uh, integrated and in, in using our data. It's, it's tough to follow that up. I mean, Phil pretty much wrapped it all up, but I'd like to add one thing, which is, you know, when, as I said earlier, when we moved home, we had to worry about the networks that we were on. By having Cortex XDR and Global Protect with the SASE, we had a full protection of our G Suite. And because we had all those metrics coming in and all the, and we had all those toggles, as I mentioned before, all those switches dialed in, we were way more secure than I, than we were before. So it was it was a perfect marriage and it was simplicity also at the same time. One thing that I love about Google is simplicity. It and by having these tools, these two tools together makes it easy and simple to to deploy very secure environments. Yeah, certainly. I mean, with the model that you guys have established, you can see, you know, the combined value of where Google Workspace and Palo Alto Network security solutions you know, really come together to provide value for the end user and for the admin teams. So that's one of the reasons that we've introduced WorkSafer, which is designed to help organizations, uh, their employees, partners, collaborate and communicate securely and privately in today's hybrid work environment. Steve, would you like to share a final thought for our viewers? Um, work with your Google reps and listen to your, your Palo Alto reps because 
they're going to be able to help you. Simplicity is key here. You don't have a lot of time to be purchasing many different tools. The, the, the benefit and the, and the true value from these two products is the simplicity of, of marrying the two together. That's all you need to be secure and very collaborative in this new hybrid world that's coming our way. Thank you, Steve and Phil, for being with us here today. And thank you to our viewers for, for being with us as well. Please visit the Google Cloud Marketplace to learn more about these solutions and others from Palo Alto Networks and for protecting your applications and workloads on Google Cloud. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for having us, Josh. Welcome to the next session of the Google Workspace Summit. This session is about modernizing and securing collaboration to accelerate digital transformation. In this session, I'm uh, supported by my colleague, Drita, who will join me. Uh, hello, Drita. Hello, Michael. It's great to have you here, and I'm looking forward also to welcome later our guest speaker when I pass the ball back to you. But now, Let's look into uh, a little market context and an overview of why uh, Google Cloud and Google Workspace are a great combination when it comes to digital transformation. Overall, we can say digital transformation is not just a discussion about lifting and shifting old IT infrastructure. It's always about, uh, let's say, cost savings, about convenience, and other aspects that we need to think of. On the one hand side, we need to think about how companies can make their core processes working much more efficient. The other one is how can we make sure we unlock team collaboration in newly hybrid environments? Closing it out with how can we improve the use of data to better reach and serve our customers? So let's look into that a bit more in detail. A great statement here is that every company will compete in a data and AI driven world. The forecast of data and AI markets will go up to more than $500 billion until the next two years, which is really a massive growth uh, that we see here. And it opens up a lot more opportunities for organizations and companies to use the efficiency and advantages of AI functions to improve their business and be ready for the future. But we also have to say that only 24% of all companies thought their organizations were data-driven in the past year. So there is really a lot of potential out there to improve and to make things better across the world in several organizations. Now let's look into security. Security often tops the list of customer concerns. And we hear that from several IT administrators or chief information security officers. The predicted impact of cybercrime annually by 2025 is more than $10 trillion. So that's really, really a big challenge here that we should not forget about. 
also the objectives of CISOs are becoming much more critical and much more focused, and they also have to act much faster nowadays. On the other side, when we now look into the Fortune 500 CEOs, we learned that two out of three of them say that cybersecurity is one of their top concerns about managing risk. So they have to be prepared in the future to make sure they can handle attacks or any cyber criminal activity. Another quote that I want to highlight that is surely true in my view is that most companies will need to become a technology company. With an expected market size for global application modernization services in the next three years, we see that there is a more than $24 billion market out there. On the other side, we have to uh, keep in mind that 80% of all workloads today are still on premise. So there is the time now and the chance there to move more things into the cloud, to become more efficient and faster and ready for, um, uh, for a higher demand of your organization in the future. Now let's quickly look into the future of work topics. Future of work is defining by three elements. The first one is that work is no longer a place, meaning that since the pandemic is up, people learned how to work from any other place just by having their laptop, a Wi-Fi connection. They can do their job, at least for many office workers and organizations. This is a true statement. The other thing is the timing. Time became much more precious especially for those of us who have kids at home and need to handle now time management and job coordination with kids sometimes having, having them at home and doing the job also from home. The last pillar here is the human connection. It still is a crucial topic and element here. While we have great features like our Google Meet here to do conversations and video calls very easily, simply and fast, people still wanna meet each other at least a few times per week and uh, to have project meetings, office meetings with other humans. Then let's move on what customers leave us uh, to ask. The first thing is about um, to become smarter. The first question here would be, how can we make smarter and more uh, informed decisions to improve customer and employee experience? The next would be around digitizing operations. How do we digitize operations to set our business up for growth, agility, and scale? The third one around empowerment. How do we empower our employees in the office, at home, on the go, and even on the front line? The last one would be, how do we proactively secure the newly hybrid workspaces and protect them from security risks before they turn into damaging incidents? So there is a lot that needs to be answered and addressed nowadays. But on the other side, if we address all these four pillars here, a company will be ready for the future and can improve really quickly. We think that this can be solved with collaboration cloud. So bringing Google Workspace and Google Cloud together in order to help building a great and efficient foundation for a permanent hybrid work model across all your offices, as well as across home, mobile usage, and of course, frontline working environments. Now let's take a quick tour of, of what's possible. The first element would be around untethering and empowering your workforce to stay productive when they work from anywhere. The first one is really give the employees the chance to work from anywhere with as many devices that they want to have chances to use offline modes, give them mobile apps and devices and browser interoperability to make things fast, simple, and highly secured. The other element is offering modern and user-friendly experiences when they probably start using these technologies for the first time. Another one is simplifying and secure access to access security data from uh, secu access secure data from the company. If it's, for example, with our uh, zero trust solution Beyond Corp, that works very smoothly and easily with Google Workspace. 
The last element proactively help protecting employees and extending workforce and company data to make sure everybody is, is safe and can do his or her job from wherever they work. Now let's look quickly into simplifying infrastructure management without the worry of performance issues. So we have features available like AppSheet that enable you to create very simple and fast applications and apps on a no-code platform and use everything quite efficient, secure for delivery of services or to build new products quite quickly without the big hustle of developer needs and involvements. Also, it avoids the vendor lock-in. With Google Cloud's commitment to open source, it also works in multi-cloud and hybrid cloud environments. At last, also the harness and the power of data. So using our AI functionality through our open APIs, machine learning services, and analytic engines on the major cloud platforms. The next topic would be around optimizing oper operations by making more informed decisions. So we can easily generate and share insights with a unified solution. Also, data warehouse modernization with Google Cloud is super easy, as well as wider business partnerships between Google Cloud and logistics providers is also uh, that can be done quite efficient, fast, and easy. Another point is improving productivity on the front line. Give your frontline workers the chance to have access to everything. If it's Google Workspace for frontline workers, allowing them to access the collaboration solutions in a very easy, fast, and secure way, as well as tracking and act on trends when you see what's going on and using the industry-leading AI and machine learning features of Google Cloud. The last topic I want to address is automate routine tasks with integrated solutions. So you can quickly adjust frontline worker staffing, um, as well as creating insights from Google forecasting powered by AI solutions that can make everything much more convenient, easier, and it helps to improve your efficiency, as well as also it uh, makes make sure that you have a built-in intelligence to uh, support all your workers with different shifts and show them relevant tasks for upcoming shifts and everything around in a very easy to administer and handle environment. With that, I'm happy to move on to the next topic, which is uh, our fireside chat with Salesforce. And I pause it back now to Drita. I would like to welcome our guest, Andy Weitz, to the floor. Hello, Andy. Hi, Drita. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for accepting to be with us today. We have prepared a couple of questions around collaboration, hybrid work. Uh, are you ready? Oh yeah, totally. Great. So I think many companies acknowledge that hybrid work environments is a new normal. What role did Google Workspace play as you at Salesforce moved to remote and hybrid work environments within the last two years? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so first off, I want to lead with gratitude, because um, reflecting back at the beginning of the pandemic, there was two things that I was not worried about. Uh, I had no concerns about uh, the Salesforce platforms and services that we run on, being able to handle everyone working from everywhere, and Google being able to handle the load of our company as we went uh, remote. And you know, we've used Google uh, Workspace for a long time, and we've been a Meet customer for a long time, and Meet's our primary collaboration platform. Uh, but we increased the load on Meet significantly because we also use in-room conferencing a lot. So we went from having lots of conference rooms talking to each other uh, with some remote participants to everyone remote all the time. And, uh, you know, there was a white paper that was published by the Google Cloud team on what they did to increase the underlying infrastructure of Meet during the pandemic, and it was remarkable. But I always had complete confidence in Google's ability to scale uh, and be secure because of our great working relationship in the past. So I just want to say thanks, uh, because I didn't lose any sleep or have any concerns of, is Meet going to fall over? Can it handle the load? Uh, but that was what happened during the pandemic, right? We all started working uh, from everywhere, and we tried to figure out how to drive connection and connectivity and work with these tools, which we'd always used, Google Workspace, and we'd been a very virtual and distributed team, but all remote all the time was absolutely something new to us. So we had to explore lots of new ways of working 
uh, with Google Meet really at, at the core of how do we stay connected, engaged, in addition to the other synchronous and asynchronous tools across workspace. Great to hear that, Andy. And how did Google Workspace uh, ensure that your teams stayed productive and engaged? Yeah, um, so you know, Google really showed off its its power of flexibility, collaboration, and connection uh, during those times. And we we used Google Meet for VTO events. Uh, I don't know if any of you all remember that, like the early days, like Count the Penguins, and you know some of the other things. Because giving back is something that Salesforce is really passionate about, and it was hard to do during the pandemic, especially in the early days. But Google Meet was at the core of how do we do that? How do we connect? It was also used for fun events. Uh, you know, whether that's like doing a cool magic show with a with a magician or you know doing a happy hour or just just getting together and laughing uh, really trying to look for how are there ways for us to continue the rhythms of life that we had before as well as welcoming new employees we hired 25,000 people this past year and 35,000 people during the pandemic and those people hadn't met their bosses they'd never stepped foot into a salesforce facility and uh, meat was the glue that allowed us to be connected together. Then from a execution and getting work done, we, as I've mentioned multiple times, we've always used Google Slides and, and Sheets and Docs for a long time. And that is, that is how we get work done at Salesforce. And you know, it certainly shined during the pandemic because it was never anything we had to worry or think about back to the scale and security uh, conversation before. We knew it was just gonna work. Um, and it's highly integrated with, with our ecosystem of tools. And uh, it was one thing that we just didn't have to really think much about um, because everyone was used to working in that way. Meet was the big change for us of trying to make sure that people weren't uh, on video calls constantly and trying to look for new ways of working there. Like one of the things that we did was uh, really encourage walking one-on-ones. And so like, let's both turn off the video and go on a walk. Another thing that I do that I would encourage all of our uh, viewers to try is a gardening meeting where it's not a meeting to talk about gardening, but during a meeting where you need to be focusing on what people are saying, but maybe not looking at content, do some weeding, plant some flowers. Um, it's amazingly therapeutic to be doing stuff with your hands and paying attention to the conversation. I find it to be very rewarding. You touched upon security uh, during the conversation now. So I hear many of our audience's questioning. So how did you really balance like the employee experience, the flexibility, and at the same time safeguarding your work environment? Was that an issue at all? Yeah, great question. So trust is Salesforce's number one value. And we take securing our environment very seriously. And uh, Google does too. We've been partners in this for a long time and making uh, the way we secure our, our data better together. And um, trust is such a rich and deep word because it means many things. Uh, it means dependable, reliable. It means trustworthy. But essentially, at the core of it, it means that our customers can trust their data with Salesforce. And um, we've designed and architected you know, our consumption of, of Google Workspace with security in mind. And it allows us to do that easily, right? Whether that's integrating into an SSO platform or a multi-factor authentication platform, or more complex things like uh, digital loss prevention, so through the built-in DLP capabilities that Workspace has, as well as detection and response. Um, so we never felt like there was a compromise of usability versus remote work versus flexibility versus securing our data, uh, and that, that Google Workspace makes that easy out of the box to do by default. Great. And as many companies rely on Salesforce as they digitally transform, could you elaborate with examples uh, as how our integration is supporting their bigger goal? Yeah, absolutely. So I, we, we definitely believe that as software as a service uh, becomes more connected and ubiquitous, all of those cloud solutions win. So a good example of that is the um, Google Sheet connector that exists between Salesforce and our um, sales cloud particularly, but sales cloud, service cloud, and the ability to natively uh, push and pull data back and forth between those two environments. So you're not having to export data from Salesforce, manipulate it, upload it into Google. Uh, the native interaction is much better. Another great one is the way the Google Workspace tools and services connect to Slack. And 
make it really easy to get work done in Slack. Uh, the Google Drive integration, the Google Calendar integration, the Slack for Gmail integration, make it really easy to share information back and forth and allow me to just work um, smarter. A good example is if I was in Slack and had a channel shared with you and I pasted in a, a Google slide that you didn't have access to, tell me, right? And go, hey, Dorita doesn't have access to this or not everyone here has access to this. Would you like to change those permissions? And because of you know Google's security first mindset, it, it certainly prompts me for uh, just the right level of permission of view, edit, or uh, you know comment only. So I, I'm looking forward to the future where our products continue to work even better together. Because I definitely think that there's uh, a common mission and vision that Salesforce and Google have of the future of work, and that we're not going back to what was pre-pandemic, and uh, we're not. We're not going to what was during pandemic. We're going to this new normal of how do we take the best of both? And uh, I, I really see both our companies as visionaries in that space and really charting the, the path for our customers of trying to figure out what better looks like in this new normal. And this brings me to the last but not least question. So as you envision the future, what does the broader Google Cloud and Google Workspace relationship look like for Salesforce going forward? Yeah, um, so I, I certainly alluded to this a little bit, but um, Salesforce calls the, the digital HQ is what we're thinking of kind of the new future of work, which is this synchronous, asynchronous, uh, hybrid, right? Like in-person, not in person, where, where that's coming together and it's the new ways of working. And we've seen some really cool things coming out of Google, whether that's the Starline platform that's coming where you know it's really the next generation of, of meet technology where you can really see someone in 3D and you can have depth and experience that's almost as good as in person, but you're still, you're still virtual. Um, so whether it's iterating on that, evolving of that, or making our products work more seamlessly or closely together, I think that there are clear opportunities for us to drive more value for our customers by our, com by our companies working together. Um, and, and I really do think that uh, when we do that, we're better together. And so I, I think that there's great opportunities for that. I also think that you know one of the things that, that Salesforce has done over the past few years is implement something that we call Hyperforce, which is our plan to move off of our on-prem data centers that we run our customer products on. Um, and move them into public cloud. And Google um, GCP is, is a key focus there. And there's some really neat things that you get out of the box with GCP that are differentiators from other clouds, uh, whether that's you know, super low latency and network connectivity or the rigor and uh, focus that the team has on the underlying infrastructure being secure, highly available and resilient. Uh, GCP is definitely doing some cool things that we're keeping our eye on. Great, thank you very much, Andy. And I'm looking forward to a great collaboration going forward. And thank you very much for being here today and sharing your insights. Thank you, Michael, for sharing a great presentation. And thanks everybody for being with us and listening in today. Please enjoy the rest of the Google Workspace Summit. Thank you.
Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Workspace Summit. My name is Chris Adamkowski. I'm the head of Google Workspace in Canada, and I'm joined here by my friend Stephen Ludlow, Senior Vice President of Product Management and Strategy at OpenText. Stephen, welcome. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me, and thanks for uh, bringing two Canadians on, eh? I really kind of appreciate it. Yeah, Stephen, we're just down the road from one another, aren't we? You're in uh, Ottawa, I'm here in Toronto. Exactly. Well, welcome. Um, so let, let's get right into it. Let's get started. So first question I've got for you in our lightning talk today is around information management. I'd just love to get your, uh, your perspective. I think a lot of people here today will have heard a lot around um, communication, collaboration, uh, security, but I think you'd have a nuanced look at that that would be really valuable for our audience today. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I, I guess in a way, my starting point is I, I think my viewpoint on information management is pretty similar to everybody else's, which is I think the goal for everybody is thinking about how we're going to create information, how we're going to capture that information. Uh, um, we want to be able to clearly use that information. Everybody creates information for a reason, so we want to use it. We need to be able to find it if we're going to use it. And, and eventually, you know, once it stops being useful or once we, we're not accessing it as often, we still think about what we're going to do from a, how we're going to store it, how are we going to protect it, how are we going to govern it, and, and really decide if that information is worthwhile keeping it, you know, determining if it should hang around for longer than, than we think, or is, you know, is there that content too risky to be able to continue to hold on to as well. So that's a, a starting point. And I think everybody who's thinking about information management is thinking about those things. But I do think that there we begin to think about information a little bit differently in the way that we interact with it. And I kind of put things in two buckets. I think about the content that runs the digital workplace, and then I think about the content that runs the digital operations or the digital business for the organization. So the digital workplace, I think everybody can relate to. It's the things we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We use email, we create presentations, we create documents, we do chats, we create spreadsheets deal with our tasks, et cetera. The things that do our day-to-day -day workplace, everybody in the in, who's a you know, knowledge worker really deals with those sorts of things. Um, but the digital business or the digital operations of the organization tends to be much more specialized within many of the functions of the organization. So, you know, how do we do with our HR documents? Does accounting deal with invoices and mm -hmm. purchase orders? Do we deal with, um, you know, certain organizations deal with blueprints? Life sciences deal with clinical notebooks, et cetera, right? So there are a lot of pieces of information or content within the organization that absolutely has to be part of how we run our digital operations. And that's the start starting point for me when I begin to think about information management and the way that we interact with that information to, again, get back to capturing, finding, using, and governing that information. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that perspective. And as you're, as you're thinking through um, your perspective, I'd love to hear your, um, an expansion upon that towards the problems that are being solved and how, how you view, uh, how you would identify those problems. Yeah, so so one of the funny things that I've noted being in the industry for a really long time is that very often the things, particularly for that business content that we work with, the things that people do uh, to try and make that information findable, usable, compliant, et cetera, are also the things that end users absolutely hate doing or won't do at all. And it, it's, it's that weird paradigm that we've been dealing with, which is why it's been very difficult to be successful in content management over the years. Uh, metadata is my favorite one, right? To be geeky, metadata is information about information. And that, that information is typically applied and like fill in four drop down fields, fill in some additional information in order to be able to submit a document. Well, end users just hate that amount of rigor in most cases to be able to simply submit a document, which is why uh, the, the productivity suites like Google Workspace have been so popular is that provided flexibility for users to manage the information the way they want to. But at some point, we do still have to think about the standards of the organization, right? We're making sure that we have a system of record, making sure that we have security and standards around where we put stuff. But even those things tend to create issues, right? If we, if we have a system of record, very often it's like when you're done a business process, the last thing you need to do is clean up all your files and put them over here. And end users, you know, forget to do it, sometimes don't do it. It's the sort of thing, again, 
the end users don't really want to do. They, you know, and in doing not doing that step of putting it in the system of record, maybe not the right security or the right access levels are provided for that content as well. And so it, it's a information management becomes something that we spend a lot of time thinking about how do we get by these problems that organizations deal with when trying to deal with that business content. Yeah, as, as you hear, as I hear you say that, it's really interesting because I think what Google Workspace certainly has go, one of the many things that it has going for it is the three billion users uh, that use it. So there is an inherent familiarity uh, with how the products work, but there's still a need for flexibility, especially in a business context. And that's a lot of what I uh, heard you just going through is, is making it easy. Yeah, so so frankly, that that's what Open Text tries to do with our perspective, and really what we focus on is that business content, rather than the authoring tools and the collaboration tools that tends to get create the document. We tend to think about the the life cycle of the document as it relates to business process, and really that's our special sauce, relating our information management to business process, and typically the applications that actually run those business processes like SAP or Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So by integrating in with SAP or Salesforce, what we're actually doing is um, synchronizing the metadata or the data that's coming from that lead application. So end users don't have to fill it in again. We know mm -hmm. that information exists in another system, so we integrate it in. We know that people have the right access when the people that can access Salesforce can also access the documents that are in our content management system as well. So really that, that, that in the end ends up being our special sauce, which is getting rid of all those things that end users refuse to do or don't like to do at least by mm -hmm. integrating uh, content management directly into the leading application, which again gets rid of that, you know, where am I supposed to put stuff? It's right there, right in front of me as I'm going through my business process. And really that's our special sauce and what we try to do from our perspective to make end users' lives easier as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that special sauce analogy and the ingredients sound like rigor, process, structure, and then Google Workspace underpinning. Yeah, so um, I, I actually think that, that that's really what we're really working towards is taking everything that you've been talking about so far in terms of Google Workspace and the familiarity people have in working with, with Google Workspace and bringing that along with uh, our, our content management into those leading applications and into business process as well. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, I'd love to hear a couple of ways that uh, you see us working together, the Open Text plus Google Workspace. Sure. So really, really simple start for me, which is um, if we're going to be managing content, one of the key types of content to be able to manage has to be um, Google Documents, of many different types, right? Google Documents, Sheets, Slides, um, et cetera. And we need to be able to manage that content along with other types of content like PDFs and, and blueprints and CAD documents, et cetera. Those are all different types of pieces of information. And we absolutely need to be able to manage those as well. And I think that the key integration for us is the ability to be able to manage those documents and seamlessly allow uh, users to be able to edit the documents directly from the content management system so that they're still using all the, you know, all the, the features of Google Documents, Sheets, et cetera, in the way that they think that they typically interact with it, but the document is being, um, being stored within the confines of the document management system from the user's perspective so that it's a seamless experience for them as well. So really the, the application of metadata, retention controls, et cetera, the best of open text is being mixed with the best of Google, uh, personal group, group collaboration and documents. Love that. All right, well, this is all really new and exciting stuff. I wonder if we uh, could give the people what they want, maybe a, a couple of future plans that you have to go along with uh, with this this uh, strategy already. Sure. So, so beyond um, obviously the the capacity to be able to work with uh, Google Workspace in general, um, we think it's really critical for end users to be able to synchronize information from not just their their Google Workspace, but if you're storing content in an enterprise application uh, for content management, you're going to want to be able to synchronize some of those con that content as well. So if there are specific um, standard operating procedures, as an example, that you have to follow on an ongoing basis and you want that synchronized back down to your desktop, you can use Google Drive to be able to uh, desktop sync as well. Um, 
I think another thing that will be really interesting for for users and 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 business processes is the ability to embed uh, open text e signature directly into um, Google Documents as well. So be able to fully digitize business processes. So you know, signature has been one of the main reasons people have still been printing out, signing, and then you know, scanning back in documents for a long time. Fully digitized business processes by integrating the, the again um, open text signature with Google Documents and Workspace. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Stephen. Really appreciate the uh, opportunity I had to talk with you today. Thanks very much for our audience uh, to our audience today. Um, thank you for joining us. Thanks for the opportunity, Chris. Really enjoyed our time.